9085. That's 563-9085. And if you are in Juneau, Southeast area, you can call 586-9085. 586-9085. If you would like to provide written testimony, you may submit that to the House Finance Committee at housefinance at aklege.gov. That's housefinance at aklege.gov. <laughs> at this time, I would first like to recognize Representative, Representative Carpenter and Representative uh, Co-Chair Foster has joined us. At this time, I'd like to open public testimony on House Bill 300 and House Bill 306. I will begin with testifiers that are in the room here. Um, is Vicki Jo Kennedy here? Yes, ma'am, I'm, I'm here online. Okay. Could you begin your testimony and please limit it to two minutes? Yes, ma'am. This is Joe Kennedy. My home is Cody at Island, but I'm still here, my third session in Juneau. And of course, this is going to be another big hot topic this year in the legislature. It eats up a lot of time, and uh, that's just a shame. I think it could all be solved real fast and real easy if you just put it to a vote of the people, as the state constitution says. There will be no changes without it. So I know there's a lot of roundabout ways and everything, but you know, the law is still being broken, and it has been broken for four years. That the statutory amount is not being allotted. I know we're in a financial crisis, but you know what? If I went out and broke the law, because I told the judge, well, you know, I really didn't want to uh, rob the bank, but I needed the money, I don't think he would give me much leeway on that. So I do believe what Governor Van Levy says, and we are breaking the law by letting this continue. Now, I did not have a dog in the fight for last year and the year before when I testified, but I do this year. I've been back home a year and a half in this state, so I qualified for my PFD, and I'm very grateful for what I did get, but it wasn't the legal statutory amount, and that's what's going to count. Now, there may be some legislators someday going out of that building in handcuffs. I don't know. I know it is being looked at down in D.C. because what's allowed is allowed. But I just want to voice my opinion on it, and I hope we get lots of phone calls. But please, please consider putting it to a vote of the people and don't just keep taking the legislature's view with take it from the people. Thank you very much for hearing me, and I appreciate everything you do for us. Thank you. Next, we'll go to, is there, are there any questions? I don't see any questions. Next, we'll go to Niels Andreessen here in the room. Thank you, Chair Johnston. Uh, members of the committee, for the record, my name is Niels Andreas, and I'm the executive director of the Alaska Municipal League. Um, Chair Johnston, on Tuesday, you said this was a better view than that one, and I, today I agree. Um, last year, there was tremendous pushback about the reductions that were necessary to balance the budget um, in the absence of uh, both sufficient and new revenues. Uh, AML supported fewer cuts, uh, supported uh, anything that could be done that mitigated the negative impacts to local governments. Um, and the, the legislature determined that uh, that would have to come at the expense of a reduced uh, PFD as the most feasible way to mitigate those impacts. AML, since 2015, has also advocated for a broad-based tax um, this year, uh, we recognize uh, and, and appreciate the fact that uh, this body is taking up uh, HB 300 and 306 uh, as the beginning of a conversation about uh, next steps as it regards um, a distribution or a split between and within the POMV, and a, including a reduction to uh, the PFD. While we recognize that this is a conversation that's necessary, and given the state of the fiscal crisis facing the state, increasingly necessary, uh, it's, not, it's also not a conversation uh, that we believe that can occur independently of a conversation about new revenues. Um, this conversation only makes sense uh, for us if we're also looking at broad-based taxes uh, and thinking about the impacts that these uh, and all of these will have on Alaskans. 
Um, we know and un understand a reduction to the PFD as one of the more regressive revenue measures uh, in the nation with impacts to those who have neither income nor purchasing power. Uh, PFD reductions fail to capture revenue from out of state um, activities and workers, uh, even as it allows for uh, continued contributions from the PFD to the federal government. Uh, that's not to say that reductions aren't necessary. That's not to say that this conversation uh, isn't um, appropriate right now. Um, but it is also to make the point that a conversation about broad-based taxes has to be had by this body, and we hope that this can uh, occur uh, as soon as possible. Are there any questions? Representative uh, yes. Ortiz? Yes. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Mr. Andresen, appreciate your comments today. Um, do you have, I know last year there was some um, specific input as to your preference for um, a broad-based tax, but you had a greater preference for one based on income rather than sales. Um, do you have any perspective on that this year, the type of broad-based tax that you'd be supportive of? Uh, Representative Ortez through the chair. Um, Last year and, and following up this year, members passed uh, adopted a resolution in support of a broad-based tax with a preference for an income tax. Um, but recognizing that any of these taxes need to be on the table and discussed, uh, whether that's a sales tax or, or something that uh, fills the gap um, for state revenues. Thank you. Representative Wall. Thank you, Madam Chair. Through the Chair. Um, Mr. Andreessen, do you, you said that you didn't want to talk about a the conversation about a reduced PFD shouldn't happen without a conversation about revenue. Do you, do you find the converse of that true, that you can't really have a uh, talk about revenue without talking about a reduced PFD? Like through the chair, Representative Wall, uh, definitely. Uh, I think the uh, right now our understanding of the state's uh, financial uh, position, including the presentation yesterday to this body by Ledge Finance, um, you know, places us at even with a zero dollar PFD uh, that the state uh, runs a deficit. Um, so both of those conversations are are definitely necessary right now. Thank you. Um, yes, Mr. Andreessen, I have, you said something and maybe I misheard, but you said by cutting the dividend then that was the most regressive tax in the nation. Is that what you meant to say or? Uh, Chair Johnston, uh, Co-Chair Johnston, the, uh, it depends probably on whether you view it as a tax. Um, I think what I said was a revenue measure. Um, as long as within the POMV, um, as you're, you're reducing the PFD and applying some of uh, the rest of the, P the POMV to state government, then there remains the question of how to pay for state government. Um, and so the reduction of the PFD is essentially a, a funding of state government, which is, is a form of broad-based taxation. Um, that could be argued. I understand that. Um, the idea, though, is that this uh, reduction of the PFD does uh, is regressive in the sense that uh, you're, you're taking away from those uh, who aren't earning and who aren't spending. And just in a follow-up to that, I guess my, my concern is when you say it's the most regressive tax in the nation, we are the only state in the nation that gives a dividend. So I, I, that, would, that was my concern. Sure. Thank you. <clears throat> Next, we'll go to the uh, Fairbanks LIO, Jermo Stewart. Could you put your name on the record and who you're affiliated with? Uh, yes, my name is Jomo Stewart, and I am the Energy, Military, and Mining Project Manager for the Fairbanks Economic Development Corporation. You all can hear me? Yes, thank you. All right, thank you, ma'am. Very good. Uh, I do apologize. Uh, the, 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 these bills have come out as, so recently I haven't been able to get a, a determinative reading uh, directly from FEDC uh, on a position on these bills specifically, and so I'm kind of defaulting back to positions uh, that we've been holding as we've gone through this process uh, starting with last year. Um, just as a general statement, uh, just a reminder, you know, bankrupt or debunked uh, corporations don't pay dividends uh, because they can't. Uh, that's why the first responsibility of a fiduciary is the health and well-being of the corporation itself. 
uh, only followed thereafter uh, by maximization or distribution of shares to shareholders uh, because companies uh, can't pay dividends if they've either collapsed or dissolved. So FEDC supports the main underpinning of both of these bills, uh, which is its adherence to the professionally defined and statutorily enacted sustainable draw on the earnings reserve, regardless of the proposed use for those funds. Again, uh, keeping the dividend more like a, uh, a corporate dividend than the way we uh, seem to look at it uh, from time to time now, uh, which is a bit more of an entitlement. Um, as to the division of the funds, um, as defined under HB 300 or HB 306, uh, just kind of speaking from a personal position, um, you know, FEDC does recognize, uh, the foul, as you all do, that the challenges facing the state um, and also uh, the increasing challenges uh, facing the state. And therefore, we are a little bit concerned, I'm personally a little bit concerned, um, about a, a rigid distribution or di division of funds, uh, recognizing that, uh, frankly, circumstances might overwhelm us. Um, and we may need to, uh, to have greater flexibility than either of the divisions that are embodied in 300 or 306 for use of those funds. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are there any questions? Representative Carpenter. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so I was just curious, um, within your um, professional expertise there, um, do sh shareholders of corporations who receive dividends, if their dividend is to be reduced, what would be the logical um, follow-up conversation that would come from the shareholder of that corporation in, re in regards to the reduction of their dividend? W would they not look to um, either generate revenue through uh, modifying their market stance or might they also look at reductions in their expense line that led to not having a dividend? Uh, looking to my professional experience is a, is a very low bar, sir. Uh, but, but yes, I mean, I, I, I would have to agree again. Uh, but we have been doing that. You all have been doing that. Again, keeping downward pressure on the, on the state budget um, is, of course, eminently prudent. Um, however, again, you, if you're cutting so much that you actually harm the corporation and its ability to sustain itself and generate future revenues, well, then you, you've kind of shot yourself in the foot. Um, so, again, looking to the health of the corporation, I, and I'm thinking about that broadly. We're thinking about that broadly. Um, again, this is important because it maintains the ability of the corporation over time to pay future dividends. Thank you very much. I don't see any other questions. I'll next go to Sue Sheriff there in the Fairbanks LIO. You're You're good. Okay. Hi. This is Sue Sheriff. Um, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you. Okay. Um, as someone who came to Alaska before there was a PFD, uh, when oil funds did not fill the state coffers, and when we actually paid an income tax and the what I think was called the education head tax uh, and still and had a university that was offering a full range of classes a ferry system that was operating and education was a, a central focus I um, I testify today as an individual I am um, not, I haven't had enough time to read uh, the materials that the LIO here uh, supplied me, and I have some questions about the projection charts that evidently were presented yesterday um, that couldn't be answered here. So I can't um, speak really to the particulars of, of Senate, I mean, House Bill 300 or 306, which I just saw for the first time um, just now. But I would like to... Um, support the idea of community assistance in, in Representative Wool's bill. And I do want to think it's going to take leadership like Representative Wool's and my state senator, Click Bishop, um, with his, his fuel tax um, proposal um, to face the bear in the room and, and tackle it head on. I want to applaud them and other legislators for their efforts and hope that the two PFD bills will get a full and public debate um, in the legislature in 
in this session, not be postponed to a, a special session in the summer, and that they will continue to have these debates over um, allocations of the permanent fund earnings and and also in the context of other revenue focused plans to make sure that we're not robbing infrastructure and services from future Alaskans. And I also think that as we face um, both very uh, lower oil prices than were um, projected in either of the projections that I was given just now. And also, we're en we've entered into a bear market um, on the stock exchange exchanges that we need to um, be cognizant that our continued d dependence on the boom and bust cycles of these two revenue sources need to be leavened out by other revenue sources, and I hope that after the several years that we have been looking at these problems, we will have a full-fledged and open uh, discussion of this in this session. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions? I don't see any questions. Next, we'll go to um, back on the, the off net, and we'll go to Janine St. John. Thank you, Co-Chair Johnson. This is Janine St. John. I'm Vice President at Linden, and I'm here to testify on in support of HB 306. Linden is a multimodal transportation and logistics company, and we provide transportation services for all segments of the economy throughout Alaska. We appreciate this opportunity to actually testify in support of HB 306. When SB 26, the POMV draw, was established in June of 2018, there was a recognition at that time that it was lacking a structure for the appropriations from the earnings reserve account. As a result, the PFD formula and allocation has created a problem for the state so that a fiscal plan has become hijacked by the desire to pay citizens first, then figure out how to pay for state services, usually resulting in a call for more taxes. This creates an even larger problem for the state, particularly when considerable taxes are targeted on our resource industries, which drive our economy. We firmly believe that the statutory formula is outdated and was not contemplated for the situation we now find ourselves in. That was 38 years ago. As a business, if we did not make adjustments to our plans in 38 years, we would not grow and likely would be out of business. The Permanent Fund Corporation Board of Trustees has also expressed concern about the appropriations and the process for utilizing earning, earning reserve funds. This bill helps alleviate and set a course for stabilizing the use of the earnings reserves. HB 306 is structured to mitigate these issues, establish clear rules, and that's appropriate for our legislature to do. It stabilizes the budgeting process. It sets a course correction for the PFD program that has been in flux since 2016. Thank you for the opportunity to testify in support of HB 306. Thank you. Are there any questions? I don't see any questions. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Next, we'll go to the room here, and John S. Sonon. Sorry, sorry if I mispronounced your name. Please come up and introduce yourself the correct way. <laughs> Good afternoon, folks. My name's John Sonnen, S-O-N-I-N, and I am uh, here representing civilized humanity, I hope. Um, and I'm hoping that we all represent that in, in and of ourselves. But um, my, what provoked me to uh, uh, attend this uh, hearing was the mention of permanent fund but I was mostly compelled by a recent introduction, and I can't give you particulars, by, I think it might have been the Senate too, of a bill of land for 
uh, dividends or in place of dividends. Uh, Alaska, Alaska. Okay, thank you. Uh, um, well, it made me uh, want to be uh, uh, addressing the issue, but uh, I don't know. Either one of these bills probably don't. However, I think uh, Rep. Wall's bill on the community uh, grants from the earnings reserve uh, is the path that we need to take. Um, giving away land is about as um, destabilizing an economic uh, policy as uh, supply-side economics. But um, no one could, could forego their uh, um, their uh, share of our profits uh, and, and, and instead buy or trade it for property in the state, except for those who don't need it. And I believe that the uh, Pony Fund um, is more an economic stimulus than anything else. And if we were reasonable about our uh, I hear the beep. If we're reasonable about our um, um, need to keep the economy vital, taxing those who can afford it, and district, um, uh, economic stimulating, stimulating those who are um, able to use that fund is the most... Uh, conscientious uh, pursuit. Thanks. Thank you. Are there any questions? Thank you very much. I don't see any questions. <laughs> Thank you. Um, well, also, and, and just for everybody's information, I'm trying to go by the time you signed up as best I can. Um, uh, next in the room is Mike Hammer. Yeah. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Could you please Chair Foster and give the rest of you folks? Put your name on the record, please. My name is Mike Hamer. I was born in Ketchikan in 1970, and I'm a lifelong commercial fisherman. I grew up in a logging camp, Kaufman Cove on Prince of Wales Island. I should note that not many of these thoughts of mine are actually mine. I'm I'm quite a fan of uh, the late Jay Hammond and a few of other of our fine statesmen. So, as forecasts for our state revenue streams look very grim at this time, I believe that the dividend slash government ratio should remain the same. I still believe that we are an owner state. I believe Wally Hickel uh, used that phrase. In my opinion, the dividend is the most equitable way for residents to share in the wealth. While the government may know better where to spend slash invest the funds, it should not assume that. Could we not attach strings to the dividend and informational packets on the origin of the fund and the intended purpose of the crafters, Hammond, Freeman, Halford, Malone, and others? The dividend pits individual greed against collective greed. Two groups pushing on opposite walls hold a building up. One group pushing on one wall pushes a building over. Whether an in a community dividend. and informational packets on the origin of the fund and the intended purpose of the crafters, Hammond, Freeman, Halford, Malone, and others. The dividend pits individual greed against collective greed. Two groups pushing on opposite walls hold a building up. One group pushing on one wall pushes a building over. Whether an income tax or sales tax with an exemption is imposed 
or some combination of taxes and fees, it should be done in a manner that is, is the least regressive. The late Jay Hammond said, a portion of the wealth must go to the residents, and if more funds are needed for basic institutions of government, then the government must find a way to claw the money back. I thank you for your time. Stay healthy in these most interesting times. Are there any questions? I don't see any questions. Thank you very much. Next, we will go in the room here, Val Valerie Therian. Thank you. Through the chair, my name is Valerie Therian. I'm a 43 resident of Fairbanks, and I am currently serving on the City Council of Fairbanks and have served three terms there and three terms on the Borough Assembly, but we haven't taken a position on this bill, um, so I'm speaking to you as an individual. Um, I am in support of House Bill 306. I applaud the Finance Committee and Adam Wool for your um, leadership and trying to decide what to do as to how to fund our government. Um, uh, for your example, our budget at the local level is very tight and we've asked for um, funds for community assistance and revenue sharing, asked for uh, money to help with um, boiler conversion, with the emergency service patrol, and the community dividend would give that um, money to our community so that we could decide at the local level how to best use those funds, and we could use those funds seriously. Um, at a personal level, um, I don't think that I'm entitled to a permanent fund dividend. Um, I um, would think that the reduction of the permanent fund dividend is necessary, and I applaud you for looking to any solution that would work to help our university um, system. I was um, very sad to see the cuts that had to take place at, at our university level. Um, with regard to capital projects um, at the city, um, we're always looking at funding to take care of our capital projects, and um, this dividend program would work very well. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Are there any questions? Thank you. And also in the room is uh, June Rogers. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is June Rogers, and uh, speaking at this particular point in time here, having already listened to several of the others who have spoken, um, I, I probably am, I don't want to keep repeating um, some of the things that have been said, um, so I'm going to tell you just a bit about myself and my position in the community and, and my interest uh, in being here. I was born and raised in Fairbanks, and my family is there, my children, my grandchildren, and my great-grandchildren. I retired uh, four years ago as director of Fairbanks Arts Association and have continued my advocacy work with community uh, service organizations uh, throughout our community with the Opioid Task Force Homeless uh, Initiatives. and. Um, the reentry program for prisoners, a variety of different social service agencies that I'm trying to network into closer communication, uh, similar to the way we organize 44 organizations under the umbrella of the Arts Association, so that we get the most result for the least amount of funds expended and, and uh, bring into full use of the volunteers in our community. I also serve on the city council. However, I am here um, on my own behalf, since, as uh, Ms. Arian said, uh, we do not have a position on this this ballot, uh, this issue. The learning of, of Representative Wool's attempt to bring focus to a, a very, very difficult topic that has uh, engaged many discussion. Um, I, I was very impressed with the work that's being done towards this, and it falls right in place with my 
my beliefs uh, that we need to be pitching ideas, talking with each other, working together in order to create some solutions for this dire situation that we're in. And I won't go past the buzzer. Uh, I, I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions? Uh, Representative Knopp. Yes. Hello. Hi, Ms. Rogers. Thanks for being here. Um, and, and your counterpart that spoke earlier, uh, I think you both touched a little bit about Adam Wool's uh, proposed community revenue sharing component of that bill. So, difficult question to ask, but do you think we'd be better served if we couldn't afford both an individual dividend or a community dividend? Do you think a community dividend, in light of where we're at, would be a better use of state funds? Assuming you couldn't afford to do both, what would be your preference, I think, is my question. I'm going to um, perhaps um, revisit several other conversations about this that I've had in the past. However, I'm just now learning about uh, Mr. Wolf's proposal, and so I don't I don't have all the particulars of the exact um, application. Mr. Rogers, I meant no, uh, by no means did I mean to put you on the spot. So okay. If, if you're not sure, just, just don't. I well, I'm just yeah. prefacing what my thoughts are, um, and I I I firmly believe that working together through community is a direct line to individual participation in the community. Um, that's. Um, a roundabout answer, I know. I, I don't believe that um, that this bill, um, number 306, is actually taking from one, unreasonably so, but it looks like it's sharing the load with all of us. So it's, it's a good effort, and I think it deserves discussion, and it deserves support. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you very much. Thank you. Next, we're going... On the off net to um, Chris Eichenloop from Eagle River. Hi, this is Chris Eichenloop from Eagle River. Can you hear me fine? Yes, we can. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of watching this uh, Kabuki theater here, and I'm, I, I'm two minutes early isn't a lot, enough time to talk about all the buffoonery that's in these two bills. So I oppose HB 300 and 306, and, um, you know, we got here by mismanaging our resources and oversized budgets, not oversized PFBs. And what I would like to see is um, we go get off the easy button. You guys think the permanent fund's your easy button. Let's go to, um, how about responsible resource development? Let's try that, okay? Because we already depleted the uh, CBR. I, I suspect next you'll try for the ERA, and then it'll be for the corpus. So uh, I oppose it, and um, let's put this money back into the private sector because they've taken the biggest hit in the last four years. Let's try that. Let's see if we can balance our economy by putting a little bit into the private sector instead of giving it the special interest. And um, let's put, let's, I would like to put the statutory formula in the Constitution so we can keep you guys' hands off of it so you're not tempted to get into funds that you really don't need. We had $9 oil before, and everybody was trying to get their hands on the permanent fund money, and guess what? We made it through. You know, if that money was gone then, uh, you guys wouldn't even be trying to touch that money. It would be gone. So what would you do? I would like to see, you know, what you would do. Anyway, that's uh, my two cents. I oppose HB 300 and 306 or any other buffoonery. Are there any questions? I don't see any questions. Thank you very much. Next, we'll go to Rebecca Crelly in Anchorage. Hi, this is Rebecca. I've lived in Anchorage since 1984. When I moved to Anchorage, I finally start, started to use my bachelor's degree in accounting. And it... Uh, but it caused a lot of change in my life, a lot of blessings, and the other thing is that I grew up in poverty in a large family. And when I look at the financial statements for the state of Alaska, 
I consistently notice that when poor people are not receiving their permanent fund dividends, it has a big impact on families with children. If you have a single mom with a few children and she may not even be working or she may be working not making a lot of money, and when she doesn't receive a permanent fund dividend, there are a lot of unmet needs that go. She probably could have problems with a vehicle. She could have problems paying her utilities. She could have problems not having enough groceries to feed her children. So my preference when it comes to our system is that we pay out a minimum permanent fund dividend. And then you can um, just figure out a, a tax system for the rest of the Alaskans to pay because there's a lot of people in Alaska that do make over $100,000 and they're able to pay a state income tax. But I really wanna see the people that are poor in the state get what they need. Thank you, are there any questions? Thank you very much, I don't see any questions. Um, next we'll go to Joan Ware and Toke. Hello, uh, Chair Lady, thank you for taking my call. Um, my name is Joan Ware and my husband is here with me. His name is Richard Ware, W-A-R-E. We live in Toke, Alaska, and we would like to testify in opposition of HB 300 and HB 306. I would like to briefly talk for two minutes, and with the chair's permission, I will hand the phone to my husband, who will also talk for two minutes, if that's, that's okay fine. with you all. Yes, that's fine. Um, Number one, um, I want I disagree with a former uh, testify of today. A gentleman mentioned that he felt that this HB 300 and HB 306 was the quote unquote most feasible way to perhaps balance the budget. I firmly stand with many Alaskans who oppose HB 300 and HB 306 or any bill that proposes any type of a reduction in our PFD. I also stand with many Alaskans who believe that it is illegal to give us our PFD that we are statistically entitled to. I also want to mention that I am happy that the Finance Committee is looking at ways to balance the budget. And I have some ideas that may or may not help, but my husband and I are both in favor of any bill that would freeze raises for any of our current legislatures until the budget is balanced. I'm also, and my husband is also, in favor of an increase to the gas tax in Alaska. Alaska is the lowest state of any state in the United States in its gas tax. I think that it needs to be increased and I'm happy that Cliff Bishop has proposed a tax on the gas, if, if I have understood his proposal correctly. Um, I have been told that people feel that this would increase the state revenue by approximately $1 billion per year. I've also been told, and anybody can correct me if I'm wrong, but it takes that it takes about one and a half billion to pay our PFD. So I would think that 
adding some increase in the gas tax would help our coffers and make it more easily, um, make it more easy for our state legislature to pay us our PFD. Um, I'm also in favor of any bill that would discontinue any state funding for abortion. I think this would also help our coffers and help us get our full PSD. I'm in favor of any reasonable solution to our unbalanced state budget. I might possibly be in favor of an increase in education tax. I have not researched that, I'll be quite honest with you, but it's something that I would definitely look at and might possibly vote in favor for if such a vote were proposed to the constituents. Um, I like the idea that Dunleavy has come up with a plan uh, to possibly offer state land um, in lieu of some PFD. I think that might help our coffers. I'm basically in favor of, of anything other than taking our PFD, and I am happy that our finance committee is looking into this. I stand Thank you. with many Thank Alaskans you. when I say that I oppose HB 300 and HB 306. Thank, and, you. Thank um, you very much. You, that, you've gone. With that, I would like to hand the phone to my husband, if that's all right. His name that, that would be all right. And you might want to look at Senator Bishop's um, gas tax bill. I think it brings in about, I think it was between tw tw $20 million. Yeah, between between 20 and 30 million, um, and it's basically for road maintenance. Thank you. Okay. I'll Ms. Mr. Ware? I didn't work, okay, hang on, hang on, here you go. You're gonna plug it, sorry. Yeah, my name is Richard Ware, I also live here in Toke, and uh, I guess I'm speaking on behalf of a lot of folks down here in Toke that, uh, that uh, are really upset that uh, the state is trying to go with this uh, 2080 proposal where the state is taking uh, most of our PFD. Uh, I agree with some of the folks that spoke earlier that, uh, especially the lady that says, when you take this money away from the citizens, most uh, people that you're really affecting most are the poor. Uh, the folks down in this community here, a lot of them rely on the PFD to buy their wood to get through the winter, and they use a lot of their money just to live day to day. My last year's PFD, I haven't completely spent yet. I've used it to pay bills and uh, uh, just uh, use it as I saw fit. And uh, I think that uh, when the legislature feels like they can spend our money better than we can, I think that's an elitist point of view. And I think that a lot of people, uh, common people down here see that. The proposal that my wife was talking about that might bring in a billion dollars is the proposed tax uh, on the uh, oil companies up here that we understand will be on the ballot this fall. Uh, my question is, if that is passed and uh, the legislature is allowed to uh, to start taxing the oil companies and bring in the, into the coffers a billion dollars, are we going to be getting back the money that they've taken from us over the last year? Um, I, you know, it's just, uh, I am in total opposition to this, this uh, bill and uh, being a uh, retired now, but a previous businessman, when things got tight, uh, I had to look at my company to see where I could cut. And I think a lot of things that can be, be done in the legislature can be looked at a little harder than like the previous gentleman said hitting the easy button and just taking easy money that's accessible that they can get to, which is totally illegal. So that's my two cents, and I appreciate you guys giving us the time to talk, and uh, uh, we'll... Uh, Thank we'll you. I, I, we, have a, we have a question. Yeah. Representative Merrick. Thank you, Madam Co-Chair. Um, sir, is token incorporated or unincorporated area? Unincorporated. Unincorporated? Unincorporated, yes. Thank you very much. 
Okay. I don't see any other questions. Thank you very much. Next, we'll go to um, Carrie Harris and Anchor Point. Tell David to stop. <laughs> Hello. I am. Tell, tell David to stop. Hello. I am completely opposed to this, to both these bills. Um, we are. are Ma'am, are you there? Yes, we're here. We're listening. Okay. I'm completely opposed to both of these bills. Um, we're facing a possible new financial crisis, and I believe that immediately giving back the past four years of the PFD will help ensure Alaskans can stay home when they are sick. This will help slow the spread and lessen the impact of the coronavirus without fear of financial hardship. It's not just the basic bills. It's it's not just the rent, the house payment, the, water, the car payment, the water payment. There's a rolling financial impact to this virus. Time off of work for illnesses causes both expense to employers and to individuals, both to parents and children, and daycare will be closing. It also is going to change the way we spend. All that unnecessary spending we do, it's changing. Our state has a lot of coffee shops, bagel shops, little restaurants, small businesses. They all provide jobs and help keep our economy moving. With the loss of the tourist industry or the extreme hit that we're about to take, we really can't afford to have people's spending habits change so dramatically that year-round small businesses are closing. People have to have some kind of financial security or they won't stop for that bagel. They won't stop at the coffee shop. They won't go out to eat. They won't go out to a movie. What people buy in retail stores is about to significantly change, and it'll be limited to staples. You won't see extra tough selling out, but you've already seen toilet paper selling out. Uh, new house remodels, that's not going to happen. New construction, it's going to drop excessively. Immediately giving back the past four years of PFDs will help ensure Alaskans can stay home when they are sick without fear of personal financial hardship. This will slow the spread and lessen the impact of the coronavirus without fear of personal hardship. And it will help lessen the blow of the rolling hardship to the state. Um, and this will especially impact municipalities that have to collect sales taxes. Because as people's spending habits are changing, and as people tighten their belts real hard for this virus impact, those little stores, shops, restaurants, all of those that provide a great deal of sales taxes to municipalities, they all go. Uh, thank you. Let me see if there's any uh, questions. Are there any questions? I don't see any questions. Thank you for calling in today. Next, we have Alan Davis from Anchor Point. Hello, my name is Alan Davis. I'm from Anchor Point. Um, it's my opinion that any appropriation of any part of the statutory PFD or changing the formula for determining the PFD without a vote of the people of Alaska should be considered embezzlement. I believe we need to make some meaningful budget cuts, not just moving money from one part of the budget to the other and say, look how much money we've cut, so we can realistically determine what additional revenue sources are needed. I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank our governor and my representative, Sarah Vance, for their stance on fiscal responsibility. Thank you for hearing me. Thank you. Are there any questions? There doesn't appear to be any questions. Thank you very much for calling in. Next, we'll go to the Fairbanks LIO to Don Gray. Yes, my name is Don Gray. I'm a 50-year resident of Fairbanks. Um, got married in 1970. Two days later, uh, moved to, uh, to uh, Fairbanks. And two days later, on the 23rd, 25th, 27th of August 1970, I began teaching at Lathrop High School. I taught about world history, other countries, uh, you know, starting back with the Romans and the Greeks. Well, the Greeks were first. They had a they had a democracy of uh, a city of 10,000 people, uh, but that might have counted some of the slaves. Uh, we 
we've had a democratic republic since the uh, writing of the Constitution. We're a representative democracy. Uh, and just by the by, if I could have just two-thirds of the amount of time that uh, our representatives or our speakers from uh, both uh, Toke and uh, the lady from uh, Anchor Point, I would appreciate it very much, a certain equality there of, of place. Um, and the, um, the bill does provide for a smaller annual dividend. It does not cut the dividend out completely. And as I understood the uh, newspaper report, uh, it's approximately $900 that would be in this first year of this new division. Uh, the additional money um, would then be used for the University of Alaska, the statewide university, and individual communities across the state. 40% was going to be allocated to the state's education formula, enough to fund fully the K-12 education programs and build world-class schools in our time. 10% would be set aside for the University of Alaska, enough to fully fund the programs to keep the best and the brightest here instead of going out of state. 10% would pay for capital projects in, in uh, Alaska, including maintaining our roads and our infrastructure repairing buildings that haven't been repaired for years, decades in some cases, and 10% that would pay for community needs, allowing for local decision makers to take control of how essential services are provided, because each Alaskan community is unique. We're urban, we're rural, we're uh, maritime in southeast, and frigid, frigid cold in the interior and farther north and west. Uh, Bill Sheffield, when he became governor after Governor Hammond, came in at a time when money was flowing everywhere. And he had, he had advocated that the, the dividend was a good idea. But he also, in his autobiography, points out that it became a two-edged sword because the dividend meant that any governor who opposed or advocated taxes would not, not likely uh, to be reelected. Maybe that extends beyond the governor to legislators, but he recognizes that in his autobiography. He also realized that the mistake would be by abolishing completely the personal income tax, which we did do. We probably should have extended it. That's what he says in his autobiography. Uh, on the side here, Warren Buffett addressing the fear that people have felt in the last two days. Because after I, I taught for 23 years at later, I was a stockbroker for, for 12 years with Dean Witter Reynolds, uh, with the Dean Witter Reynolds, Morgan Stanley, or Morgan Stanley and Dean Witter, as, as they called it. And then... And, and can you wrap this up, please? I, I, okay, the thing is, all of these things that are proposed in House Bill 30 are ways that we can improve the life's of all the citizens of our state. There will be a dividend, there will be uh, infrastructure, there will be schools, there will be the things that make us a civilized state and nation. Without them, we're all fighting and grubbing for each other, or, uh, struggling against each other like, like rats on a sinking ship. And we are not rats on a sinking ship. We are all in this together, and we need you as our representatives to pass House Bill 300 or come up with something better, if you can, that is fair to our future and to our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren. I've got two grandchildren in Anchorage. Thank you very much. And, uh, uh, I wish you the best. I realize you don't have an easy task ahead of you here, but I'll be happy to answer any questions. Are, are there any questions? I don't see any questions. Thank you very much for taking the time. Next we go to Calvin. Uh, pay attention to Warren Buffett. He's 89, but he's seen a lot of markets, and he's not afraid of this one. Yes, thank you. If you live long enough, you will see all markets. Yes. Yes, that's true. Thank you. <laughs> uh, next we have Calvin um, Kasipit, and I hope I said your name correctly. The city of Gustavus. Are you uh, yes, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. My, again, for the record, my name is Calvin Kasipit. I'm the uh, mayor of the city of Gustavus. And I want to thank you for um, the opportunity to provide you some thoughts on HB 300. 
Um, a lot of this, basically, the, the the way I'm reading this is that it's kind of help, helping out with the community assist community assistance program. It's maybe a replacement for that. I'm not sure. But um, as far as the community assistance program, it's been a reliable source of desperately needed funding for these for, for small rural communities like mine um, in, the, in these unorganized boroughs. Um, these small communities such, such as mine, Gustavus, we rely on this funding to operate our city services and provide needed, um, needed um, services to our, to our residents. Um, we have limited and, and, typic, and typically small revenue streams. Uh, when, when developing our budget, we have been able to fund uh, our important services using this uh, community assistance program funds. Um, for us, reducing our budget by about twenty thousand dollars, you know, even a, a, a reducing our budget by twenty thousand dollars has a huge impact on our little community, um, especially now with the uh, threat of the coronavirus and the impacts that we think it might have on our tourism industry. Basically, that's how all our sales, most of our sales tax revenue is generated by tourism. Um, um, the importance of the cap this year is is, is really magnified. Uh, the uh, uh, community, action, uh, community assistance program is really um, amplified. Um, reducing this this state assistance it can't can't come as a worse at a worse time for us. Um, I, I'd like you to consider ensuring that the uh, our uh, what used to be our community assistance program funds um, are restore them to the maximum that that we've been allowed by law. I mean it's it's. Um, it's a, it's a struggle for us out here with reducing uh, community assistance program funds, and um, um, without them, we we have a hard time providing services to our to our um, our community. And, and we do ha and we do contribute our own. We have a three percent sales tax here. We have a four percent bed tax here. Um, we have user fees. We have we we raise our own revenue, but um, it's not like we. Um, we're looking for a handout. We try to do the best we can, and, and this, the community assistance program has been a vital part of our of our funding structure. Thank, thank you for your time, and thank you for listening. I appreciate it. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Are there any questions? Um, thank you very much. I don't see any questions. Next, we'll go to Mike Coons, Palmer. Yes, this is Mike Coons. I'm speaking for myself. These two bills are nothing but smoke and mirrors. What they do is grow money, grow government with our money. Money that you can't get with an income tax or sales tax, so you tax our PFD. I do hope some smart lawyer goes after this from that standpoint sometime soon, because this is nothing more than taxation without representation. Didn't we fight and win a revolutionary war over that? What would work would be to hear the constitutional amendments on spending and the PFD and to truly let the people vote. Same with the constitutional amendment on any taxation for approval by vote of the people. Yet, you refuse to do so. I am one of the many unwashed valley trash that you came to see and supposedly hear from last year on this very topic. You came with your agenda. You came with your preconceived notion of what you want and were going to do. You went on a dog and pony show to show that you wanted to listen to the voters. That was a dog and pony show, and that's all it was, a show. Same with these hearings. You have zero intention of listening and acting on what we people have to say. You have every intention of stealing our money, then using that money for your socialist goals. Yes, I did say socialist, because each and every one of you that is taking from we the people are for or, are or support socialism. So what I say here will not have a single positive impact because you are sitting there with closed minds. So all I can do is do what we can to voice and put on the line not only what we want, but to call you out from the socialist and socialist supporters that you are. Representatives Tilton, Soros, and Leonard, Carpenter, Merrick are the only ones in this committee that are actually standing for our state, its people, and the oath of office that they took. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are there any questions? I don't see any questions. Thank you for taking the time. Next, we'll have Susan Schuler from Seward. Yes, 
a Susan Schuler. I'm just calling to testify independently. I uh, agree with a lot of your callers. Chris from Eagle River, Rebecca from, I believe she was from Anchorage, the couple from Toke, to, to take away. We're, we're a one-income family in Seward, Alaska. We're looking at possibly absolutely no cruise ships coming in here this summer because of the coronavirus. The, the PFD for a lot of families down here, not only us independents, but the Coast Guard and, and the freight companies that actually run year around here, which most businesses close down. We have an impact of taking away the, the PFD is, is going to mean no fuel, no food, no gas. It's going to be a tremendous hit on smaller economies that are around this state. Again, the single parents, the retired, it, it, it makes a difference to have it. And I think that, like, I believe it was the mayor from the town a few phone calls ago saying to cut 20000 out of their budget. So what are you guys doing to help us? Why are we in this situation? The overspending, the lack of picking up funds and more revenue. Uh, maybe the deals for the oil companies need to be a little less sweeter on their side. You know, think about when those things are being determined in your upper echelon that you speak up for the people and not for you know, trying to weasel the way out of a budget that has been overspent for years and years and years. I, I just believe it needs to be um, put up before the people, before the public. We need a full public debate on this before it goes any further. Because okay. it's about we the people, not not we the, the budget overspenders. So thank you very much for your time. Hey, thank you. Are there any questions? I don't see any questions. Thank you for taking the time. Next, we have Daryl Smith from Juno. Um, do you have it on mute? Can you hear me? Now we can, yes. Yes, I'm opposed to HB 300 and HB 306. I'm opposed to HB 300 and HB 306. Okay. Um, you guys have been overspending for years, and to steal our dividend, which is the biggest economic driver in the state of Alaska, is crazy. Government doesn't supply jobs, private industry does. All you guys do is take the money and blow it on special interest projects you have. Um, one fifth of your budget goes to Medicaid. The deficit, $281 million, I think you had to have last week. Uh, it's a federal government program. If they don't want to pay 100% of it, you should end the Medicaid program in Alaska. Um, an income tax would be great. And a school tax, like we used to have back in the 70s. But uh, for the state to build all these multi-million dollar schools, I'm against that. Each town should pay for their own school. And if Anchorage wants money, they need to put up a sales tax. And I think uh, we're looking for attorneys to, to sue the state for our past dividends. You guys should be in jail for violating the law. And your socialist programs aren't going to work. Have a good day. Um, it looks like Representative Lebon has a question for you. Thank you, Madam okay. Chair. Uh, Mr. Smith, thank you for calling in. Do you have an opinion regarding the fails of the ferry system and how we might support it? Well, yeah, you could uh, take $20 million out of the permanent fund, build some new ships. Okay, thank you. I don't see any other questions. Thank you for taking the time. Next, we'll go to Lee Lepsher in Anchorage. Yeah. 
Very good. Good afternoon, uh, Representative Johnson. Uh, thanks for the opportunity to address you today. I guess I'll be in a minority, and uh, I am uh, a resident of Anchorage, a small business owner, and I'm calling to support HB 306 uh, because I work with a lot of businesses all over the state, all sizes, all industries, and I hear uh, from most of them or all of them about how uh, negative the impact is uh, this whole situation we're in with fiscal uncertainty and the fact that we have not taken any action to to resolve it, which I see HB 306 after a lot of years of discussion as a meaningful plan that uh, gets us headed in that direction. Uh, I also know that continuing the status quo we've got right now assures we're, we're neither going to have economic stability nor an adequate uh, portfolio of state services, and we are not going to have a dividend. Um, I work in a lot of other states as well as Alaska places that don't have dividends, have dramatically higher property taxes, and have sales taxes of 6 or 8%. Um, and based on that, I would say that I would, I would much rather have a small EFD and not being looking forward to new and higher taxes, uh, which is really the only other way that we're going to do a lot of the things that the state has got to do. Um, I, I apologize for some of the abuse you're taking. Uh, I, I commend you for being willing to do that and having the leadership to develop this plan, which um, many of the groups that I've been involved in have, have debated for many years what the solution is for this problem, and this is the first meaningful plan that I have seen that actually works in that direction, and I would encourage you to not just have the discussion, but to take action, go ahead and put it into place. Thanks again for your time and for what you're doing. Thank you. Are there any questions? Thank you for taking the time. Next, we'll go to Mary Cornelius in Fairbanks. Hi, it's Mary Cornelius, and I'm from Fairbanks. I'm a 40-year resident of Fairbanks, and I was an original resident that signed the contract with the state of Alaska that no federal and no state agency would touch my PFD in any way, shape, or form. I feel that that contract has been breached, and I'm still wondering when we're going to get paid back for the dividend that they have taken. Does anybody there have any answers to that? You know, the one that they took before they even brought it to the legislature, that, that was a breach of the contract that was originally signed. We opted out of getting a lump sum because we felt that having a uh, dividend yearly would also continue on to our generations after us, kind of like the voice into the future. If, if you guys continue to take our dividend to increase the budget of the state, then what, what are you giving back to the people? Um, could you, what contract did you sign? I, I've been here. The original permanent fund dividend contract when it was up for the people to decide whether or not we got a one-time payout. And originally it started at $50,000 and everyone in our family said, oh no, that's too little. And we knew it was too little. Uh, I, 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 I but guess each I, one of us could have taken our fifty thousand dollars and probably started a business or invested in a house. I, but I just, I, I'm not aware. To a permanent fund dividend. Yeah. Thank you. I, I've been here since 1975, and I never saw that contract. Thank you. Are there any questions? I see no questions. Thank you for the, taking the time. Next, we will be going to Bert. Uh, Hodelin? Huftelling. Hi, this is Bert Huftelling. I'm uh, representing myself, my kids, and everybody in Alaska that doesn't know that this is going on. You guys currently have two bills, HB 306, HB 300. It, that basically is the same six plans that you presented last October in your bicameral PFD work group. You provided a budget PFD tool there that uh, showed that if you eliminated the PFD as the 
tax revenue you're trying to turn it into, you actually had a $900 million surplus sitting there with the formulas that you currently are using for your budget PFD tool. Even with the current market going and dropping the way that it has, there is an extra surplus of around $500 million right now using your own tool based on reality of what the PFD earnings are currently at. We had $68 billion, now we're sitting closer to $65 billion thanks to the market dropping. Your bills do not reflect reality for Alaska. Your PFD budget tool proves this. It shows that this is not tax revenue for you to be using to spend on the budget for the state. Like I said, you remove it as tax revenue as you're showing it in your tool, you have a 500 to $900 million surplus depending on where our stock market currently stands at and the returns we have coming in. Your plan presents doesn't provide any of your six plans, uh, any inflation proofing doesn't offer one penny being cut from the budget. Everything that you have presented shows a doom and gloom. If you don't get your hands on that permanent fund dividends ERA, you can't pay for the special interest budget. The only way you can do it is to steal it. Today is pointless listening to the special interest that you had talking earlier on the telephone um, they, they giving testimony to you folks in regards to this is why we think you should instill the bills that you have, that the government expenditures that we need to make sure get covered got to be paid somehow and causing the most regressive tax in the state of Alaska by charging us the taking of our permanent funds dividends is what's going to keep us in the longest recession Alaska has ever seen. We're barely even coming out of the longest recession that we're in right now, and what you're currently trying to do by stealing the entire field PFD does exactly that, turning it into a one big giant welfare check to be distributed between all the different communities. I was shocked listening to you guys talk yesterday about HB 300 and describing the baggage plan on how to distribute a portion of the permanent fund dividend to every community in Alaska based on how many people they have living there. And then if that city feels that they can cut a permanent check to the uh, residents that live there, say maybe $300 after they get $1,400, you guys in the state level take $1,600, leave us with $300 if we're lucky. And, and, and could you please wrap it up? Sure, I can wrap. Uh, yeah, I can wrap this up. It's unbelievable that uh, you're trying to do this. You've turned our welfare, our system ferry into a welfare system. Our daycare is our K through 12, and our universities are uh, now for gender pronouns, safe spaces, and making sure climate change is the number one agenda. I am completely against both of these bills. You guys need to be brought up on criminal charges. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions? I don't see any questions. Next, we'll go to Catherine Silt. From Kenai? Oh, from Kenai? Yes. Um, I oppose both of these bills. I think uh, the statutory changes to the permanent fund dividend are pointless. As we know, statutory formulas are ignored at will. So if we need, I think we need a permanent solution uh, for the permanent fund dividend, and that is a constitutional amendment. Um, I think the 80-20 split is at face value unfair. I mean, children even know that you need to split things up 50-50. Um, I hear this over and over that we can't afford the PFD, but the permanent fund dividend is not what got us into our budgetary problems that we have today. Um, I think we can't afford to put off new revenue measures any longer. I think it's ridiculous that we sit here and we still don't have a plan for broad-based taxes. I also think it's ridiculous that we're not willing to cut the budget anymore. I think it needs to be a comprehensive approach, and I can't quite understand why we're not doing that. Um, at a time when Alaska is looking at an, possibly an economic collapse with the collapse of the price of oil and tourism coming up, I don't understand why we would choose to fund the budget with a revenue option that's most harmful to Alaska families and the Alaskan economy. Um, I don't understand why we're not looking at the distributional impacts of what 
funding the government with the PSD would be. Um, so I oppose these measures. I would like everybody to be mindful of the impacts this has to Alaskan families. I think we should choose revenue options that include non-residents. And thank you. And that's all I have. Thank you. And could, could you state your name for the record, please? It's Catherine Felt from Kenai. Thank you very much. Um, next, we have Mike Gillis from Big Lake. Yes, this is Mike Gillis. Um, I'm against both bills. Uh, I'm speaking for myself. Um, I'm, I'm a realist. I know, you know, I, I knew that once you got the fingers in the PFD, you would just keep taking until eventually you take it all. I'm, I'm just wondering if there's a way that maybe you guys could just fill your pockets, go down to Bush Company, and just give us like our subsurface mineral rights back, and you can keep the whole thing. That's all I have to say. Thank you very much. Are there any questions? I don't see any questions. Next, we'll go to um, Kristen Bush from Eagle River. Hello, this is Kristen Bush. I'm from Eagle River. I'm speaking for myself and my family. I find it unfathomable that we are revisiting this issue wrapped up in a different wrapping paper with another bow on top of it than we have for the last four years. You guys need to do the hard work with the budget and not look to steal the money from the permanent fund dividend and a formula that has worked for a very, very long time. Now, a lot of people say, well, that's, that long time is no longer the, the time we live in. And I would agree with that, except that the budget hasn't had any serious gaps put in place and reductions made so that we can live within our means. You know, a simple family budget, you have to have more coming in than you have going out. And the permanent fund dividend is not the personal piggy bank for every single dollar and project that come across the table of the legislators. You know, I feel particularly upset about the fact that you take the dividends from children. You know, they should have their complete and full dividend on the prior calculation because they have no voice in this. They have zero influence. They cannot vote. They cannot show up and give their testimony um, in a manner that is impactful to you. Um, it's taxation without representation. You know, I can fight it if, if, um, with the testimony and I can fight it with the ballot box, but what is my child supposed to do? They can't do anything. They can't vote people out. And you guys need to work on the cap, and I oppose both of these bills. Thank you very much. Thank you. Are there any questions? I don't see any questions. Thank you for calling in today. Next, we have John Alec from Delta. Hello. Hello. Could you introduce, yeah. your, can you introduce yourself and put your name on the record, please? My name is John Alec from South to Alaska, and I'm representing myself, my family, and most common Alaskans. I am also opposed to HB 300 and 306. Uh, I've been watching you guys faithfully, and I'm really disappointed in you. Um, Valerie Therrien might not need her PFD, but I do. Uh, I've been here since 77, and I can tell you guys already have your mind made up. I've been retired two years from food service, and I need my full PFD. Golden Valley is draining me, four to $500 a month. I like my electric hot water heater, my electric dryer, stove, lights, etc. But why are we so much more than down south? Uh, Jay Hammond, he's rolling over in his grave watching you guys. We need our full PFDs and back pay. Any changes to the PFD uh, formula needs to go to a vote of the people. And uh, I want to say that my representatives aren't representing their constituents. Um, we need our full PFDs and back pay. And up here in the interior, we need help with our electric bills, not just talk. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Thank you. Um, are there any questions? I don't see any questions. Thank you for taking the time to call in. Next, we have Robert Her uh, Heatherton. 
in Anchorage? Yes, hi, this is Robert Hetherington in Anchorage, Alaska, and I represent myself and my family and any Alaskan that uh, doesn't necessarily have the means to contact you guys. Um, I am strongly opposed uh, for House Bill 306 and 300, and I hope every single one of you got my email the other day uh, regarding that. <clears throat> um, it, it, it's 100% ridiculous, and I can sit here and say everything else that everyone has said, um, but it comes down to the nitty-gritty that uh, I would say 9 out of 10 of you don't give a rip what us Alaskans think, and you only care about yourself, and you only care about your pocketbook. Because you don't know what it's like to struggle. You don't know what it's like to struggle like uh, my in-laws that live in Fairbanks and have to pay for six months of oil for 1600 bucks. You know, like, it, it, it doesn't make any sense. It's completely ridiculous. And if you're not careful, Alaska is going to become a social estate. And I, I figure that's what exactly every single one of you want is for us to be a common social estate. I've been here 29 years. I was born here. I was raised here. And what you guys are doing is not the Alaska that I grew up loving. And I think it's complete garbage that we are even having this discussion. It's not my problem. Y'all don't know how to balance the budget. You don't have to worry about my budget being balanced. Why do I have to sit here and fret? And why does every single Alaskan have to fret? Why does my neighbor have to fret over if they're going to make it through the wintertime because they can't pay their bills because you guys are too nitty-gritty and you want to uh, hoard all the money to yourself and pay your special interest and all that garbage? On top of that, you want to add a fuel tax. We already pay enough in taxes and fuel. But you want to pay, you want us to pay more in taxes and then also cut back the PFD? That doesn't make any sense. And so, you know, this, you know, election year's coming, election time's coming, you know, li listen to the people. I know you probably don't and you probably don't even give a rip, but you need to listen to the people of Alaska and not put your, don't think, don't think about yourself. You're there to work for the people. You're not there to work for yourself. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions? I don't see any questions. Thank you for taking the time to call in. Next, we have Joni Berner from Wasilla. Hello. I want to testify against both House Bill 300 and House Bill 306. And you also put your majority of Alaskans do. Could could you I find it quite? Could, could you um, put your name on the record first, please? Sure. My name is Johnny Bernier. I'm in Wasilla. <laughs> and I am against House Bill 300 and 306, as I know the majority of Alaskans are. And I find it disgusting that you're even debating or discussing this garnishment of the PFD in the middle of a pandemic outbreak. I think you need to show that you work for the people and protect them now. The remainder of at least this year's PFD should be immediately direct deposited into Alaskans accounts. There are a lot of low-income people who could use the money to prepare their families and help their neighbors during the current health crisis. People can help each other on a local, personal level more efficiently than a government bureaucracy can. I think you're afraid to put this issue to a vote because you know the truth. You know that Alaskans are independent and they don't want more government. Thank you. Um, anybody have any questions? Doesn't seem there's any questions. Thank you for taking the time to call in. Next, we go to Palmer to L.D. Howard. Yes, this is L.D. Howard from Palmer. I'm representing myself, my family, 907 Freedom. I'm a small business owner here in the Matsu Valley, and I just wanted to completely oppose HB 300 and 306. The PFD infuses monies into all communities around Alaska. The money spent on recreational toys also increases the money spent as Alaskans enjoy this great state. Retroactively paid back PFD monies will stabilize Alaska in these times. Also, many families rely on PFD to save for their children's college fund. So stealing the money from Alaskan citizens is stealing the future of Alaska and the children in the future of the workforce. As of 2000s and now, we're only seeing a rate of 5.9% increase in our population. And as of 2020, we're only seeing a quarter of a percent or 0.23% in population increase. Why are we needing a reconfiguration of the PFD as much as 30% more taken for operating costs when our population doesn't warrant or dictate that increase of taking that money? <clears throat> I 
I just, I, I don't understand why this is even an issue. I would strongly encourage you to leave this to the people, put it to a vote. The elections are coming up, bring it to a vote and hear what the Alaskan people have to say. That is all I have to say about that. Thank you. Are there any questions? I don't see any other questions. Um, next we go to Anchorage with Avon Ose. Javen? There. Yeah. Could you introduce yourself? Bear with it, MTA woes. So we have to preserve the permit. Thank you. Are there any questions? I don't see any other questions. Um, next, we go to Anchorage with Avon Ose. Javen? There. Yeah. Could you introduce yourself? Put your name on. Thing to gavel to gavel here, and it seems like the people of Alaska have spoken pretty clearly on House Bill 300 and 306. I am not in favor of it. I got to Alaska in 1957. This was a territory. The eight stars of gold on a field of blue. You might as well take it down if you take that PFD away and hoist up the golden grizzly bear for California. You're trying to Californicate Alaska. We don't like it. If it takes five years, if it takes ten years, we're going to get all of our money back. If we have to sweep the Senate clean and the House clean, we're going to get rid of you. Give us our money back now. Thank you. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Are there any questions? I don't see any questions. Thank you for taking the time to call in. Next, we have Walter Tellman from Wasella. Hello? Hello? Is this Mr. Yeah. Tellman? Uh, hi, this is Walter Tellman in Unalaska. I mean, in, in Wasella. Sorry. <laughs> yes. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, yeah. Sorry, I just moved up here, here a couple of years ago. I mean, I was born here. I'm over 60 year resident here in the state, and as were my parents, and I, you know, part of a large family. So, anyway, I don't usually comment on things like this topic, but, uh, you know, I'm very grateful to live here. I think we're blessed to have a good life that we do. But, you know, I just think that we also realize we're in a tough place and, and you all are too by past actions that happened and um, you know anyway I, I want to just say that I'm, I am in favor of uh, us taking a, another look at how we how, we, how we're spending and I think I would be in favor of this HB 300 306 because um, you know we, we, we got to do something here and I'm willing to give up a little bit of uh, whatever my PFD would be worth, I guess, to see it go toward uh, finding a solution and creating a, you know, keeping, keeping things going. Otherwise, you know, we, we might all get individually a little bit of money, but the whole state could fall apart. So, you know, I, I'm, I don't, I don't uh, envy you guys up there at all, and I know it's a tough job. And anyway, uh, I guess I guess I want to just give that two bits. So thanks for your time. Thank you very much, Mr. Tillman. Anybody have any questions? I don't see any questions. Thank you for taking the time to call in. Um, next we have Dan, and I do apologize for folks when I mispronounce your name. It's not intentional. Um, Dean Kasisk. Yes, thank you. Could you please introduce yourself and put your name on the record? Yes, my name is Dean Kaziski. I'm from Seward, Alaska. And um, I wanted to say that I'm representing myself and family. Um, I resent the way that the, the House is going on, is using the Binding Caucus to take, the, take, take our voice and the citizens of Alaska's voice away from voting on, on the permanent fund and stealing our permanent from, from us. I feel you should vote no on HP 300 and HP 306 and HCR 13 and 
the we should give us a voice in how we spend the permanent fund or how the permanent fund is distributed. That's all I got today. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions? I don't see any questions. Thank you for taking the time to call in. Next, we have Eugene Verdon from Eagle, Eagle River. Yes, uh, this is Eugene Verdon. I live in Eagle River, Chugiac. And I am opposed to 300, 306. This thing is never going to be put to bed unless you let us vote on it. Put it on the ballot, let the Alaskans speak from all over the state. We all have different needs and wants. And it's terrible to take this away from our grandkids. Like other people before them have used it for higher education. Anyway, I'm opposed. And uh, I think, uh, I'm thankful that we have good representatives where we live. I just hope that the, this next November can change that in other parts of the state. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions? I don't see any questions. Thank you for taking the time. Next is Ron Johnson from Fairbanks. Mr. Johnson, oh. are you there? Can you hear me? Yes. Could you put your name on the record, please? Ron Johnson, resident of Fairbanks for 44 years, representing myself. Uh, I'm in favor of House Bill 306, or any bill that will restructure the PFD formula to reflect today's realities. When the original formula was developed 35 years or so ago, basically none of the government was funded out of the permanent fund. It all came from oil money. So we could have given all of the permanent fund earnings to the PFD 35 or 40 years ago. It wouldn't have affected the ability of the government to function. The situation is reversed today. Most of the unrestricted general fund comes from the POMV draw. So we need to make sure we have enough in that draw to pay for the functioning of the government. And if people are worried about getting a lower dividend, if we don't get 3000 or 1600 some of the savings in paying a lower dividend can be used to beef up the HES budget so those really in need can benefit from the money coming from the state. Half the people in the state, I think, will do just fine without a large PFD. For many years, the PFD was $1,000 or so. We didn't hear complaints then. So to keep us from spending the whole legislative session each year arguing about the size of the PFD, I'm in favor of a bill like House Bill 306 that reflects today's realities, which is, once again, most of our state government funding is coming now out of the permanent fund, not out of oil. So we have to preserve the permanent fund for the future to allow the government to continue to function and to deal with crises like the coronavirus that we're facing now. And that concludes my testimony. Thank you very much. Are there any questions? I don't see any questions. Thank you for taking the time to call in. Um, next we have Vipia Cusman from Delta Junction. Dear Representative, my name is Vivian Kluger. I'm calling from Delta Junction. I don't support HB 306 because it's not fair for a representative government to take away the people's share of the 50-50 allocation of the dividend. I think as my elected representative, you should put HB 306 to a vote of the people. Please and thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions? There doesn't appear to be any questions. That is the last person we've had signed up for this first uh, hearing. And um, um, seeing no one else in the room that wants to testify and seeing no one else online, I would like to remind Alaskans that written testimony can be submitted to the House Finance at akledge.gov. That's House Finance at akledge.gov. We will continue public testimony tonight, Thursday, March 12th, at 5 p.m. And um, just for folks' information, the numbers to call, you either can go to your LIOs if they're open. If you're outside of Anchorage and Juneau, you can call 844-586-9085. That's 844-586-9085. If you're in Anchorage, 
You can call 563-9085. That's 563-9085. And if you're in the southeast in the Juneau area, you can call 586-9085. Again, you can send written testimony to House Finance at akledge.gov. And we will recess until 5 p.m. tonight. Thank you all for tuning in. Don't forget to share. Facebook squeals on you. If you don't share, all Alaskans need to be seeing this. They need to know you know that this is going on. Send out your own messages on your own Facebook pages. You need to let your friends, your family, anybody that lives in this state to know, they need to call in and testify about this bill. These people are taking what they call a tally. They are check marking every little box every single time somebody says tax. Take the PFD, use it for this, use it for that. They are going to give all of these private testimonies that they have taken that have come in behind the scenes, and they're going to calculate them all and say and they're going to come out like they did last year when they came out with HB 2000 and HB 2001, and they're going to declare that the PFD is the only way that they can move forward with government. Um, I, I think there was one really good testifier there that made a comment about how much money that they are using and uh, using their own PFD budget tool. That is what six plans that they have presented here in front of us. It's an HB 306 and HB 300. Both of these plans are based off of their bicameral PFD work group. You can find that pinned to the top of my page. I knew it when I went and filmed it, it that this was going to become the issue of what they were going to be holding over our heads this year. And lo and behold, what are they having testimonies today about? What's pinned to the top of my page? I called it then. I'm calling it now. If you don't step up, tell your friends to call, testify, send them an email, write them letters, uh, leave them messages on their own personal phones if you have them. Don't forget to share this. Facebook squeals on you. If you don't share, I will be back at 5. I'm going to go ahead and start this now with the governor's coronavirus press briefing update since they were supposed to be having uh, the House Bill 300 and 306 is what's supposed to be taking live testimonies for now. Unfortunately, they decided to pull this stunt uh, right at the exact same time, denying us the ability to watch live the testimonies going on in the House uh, floor right now. Don't forget to share. Facebook squeals on you if you don't share. Call this meeting the House Finance Committee back to order. Let the record reflect that it is 5.02 p.m. on Thursday, March 12, 2020. Present are Representative Telton, Vice Chair Ortiz, Co-Chair Foster, Representative Sullivan Leonard, Representative Josephson, Representative Wool, and myself, Co-Chair Johnston, and Representative Merrick. As we start, please remember to mute your cell phones. Today we'll continue our public testimony on House Bill 300 and 306. We would ask folks that limit their testimony to two minutes to allow, allow enough time for others to testify. I'd like to remind folks that they need to sign in by 7 p.m. We also ask all off-net callers to please hang up after your testimony to keep as many lines open as possible for other callers. Testifiers can continue to access the meeting on your computer at akledge.gov. Click on the Live Now button. The hearing may also be televised on gavel to gavel as well. There are three numbers of off-net callers. For those callers outside of Anchorage and Juneau area, please use 844-586-9085. If you're in Anchorage area, you call 563-9085. In Juneau, you can call 586-9085. If you'd like to provide written te testimony, you may submit it to House Finance Committee at housefinance at akledge.gov. At this time, I'd like to continue public testimony on House Bill 300 and House Bill 306. I see that Bruce Bacchus from Palmer is online. Could you please introduce yourself for the record? <coughs> Mr. Bacchus? 
Do you ha is your phone on mute? Nope. Okay. Can you hear me now? Now we can. Yes, thank you. Okay, I'm sorry, ma'am. Yes, my name is Bruce Parkus. Uh, I'm a resident of Uh Right now I'm out of state, but uh, I'd like to weigh in on this um, thing with the PFD. Uh, we've been going back and forth with this thing ever since Governor Walker did the original veto. And I don't believe that what he did was correct. Uh, I disagree with that decision. The people of Alaska all have uh, interest in that dividend. And, you know, special interest groups asking for money out of it and things like that, that takes money out of the pockets of every other Alaskan to direct to that special interest. Um, I believe the way this would be handled best would be by getting a petition together if we need to and set up a vote by the people to decide what they want to do with the DFD and let the people decide what to do with it. And it means it is the people's money. Uh, I realize the state also has interest in it too, but that was set up as, you know, to help us in prosperity. Uh, right now we're getting ready to go into a real hard time with the riders. Prices are going to go up, stock market's going down, and my sister just lost $26,000 in the stock market. Uh, things are going to be tough for Alaskans for the next couple of years, um, and it's not going to be able to be able to maintain to be in Alaska, you know, without that dividend. Uh, especially like me, I had to quit my job, basically because we got hit with a ransomware from Russia and lost all our aircraft documents and being a maintenance controller I couldn't approve any airworthiness this releases on the aircraft because of that. So I'm without a job and I'm looking for work and you know that dividend would go a long way to <laughs> helping me make it through this year. Uh, we have last year too. Uh, if they don't want to do a petition and that the people won't, I believe that uh Governor Dunleavy should veto these and request that there be a vote. Uh, obviously, he has the power because Governor Walker had that power. So I'm hoping Mr. Dunlap will consider that and, you know, veto all these special interest groups and come up with some way of letting the people of Alaska vote on how we want our money to be spent or saved, you know, according to the needs of the state and the people, not just the state. Um, there's a lot of people in the state that aren't able to weigh in on this due to certain circumstances and things like that. Um, my concern was, you know, I just wanted to put it in my two cents or to make sure that somebody's sticking up for the people here. Um, okay, and would you like to wrap it up? Uh, because Representative Merrick has a question for you. Excuse me? Uh, Representative Merrick has a question for you. Yes. Um, Hi, Mr. Barkas. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Ms. Barkas, you used the term uh, special interest group uh, several times during your testimony. Can you let me know who it is you're referring to that's a special interest group? Well, I believe there's, uh, I'd have to do my research again, but I believe there was, there was like three different groups that were petitioning to that part of the PFD used to help them out. Um, I have to go back and look. I may be mistaken, but I do know the state has, you know, taken the dividends used to make up for, you know, losses in our budget due to other things. We're getting ready to have a real big loss in our budget with oil prices going down and all of that. And even if there is no special interest groups, you know, interested in it, I believe that it should be set up where the people decide where that money goes instead of just a few of the people up there, you know, in charge that have to say so. Um, I think, you know, it requires a vote by the people to be able to decide what happens with the money that we have part interest in along with the state. Uh, when Governor Walker vetoed that dividend, um, that really hurt a lot of people. And I I just really hope that we don't have to go through, you know, more years of that or use more money on that dividend. I believe that dividend should be, all the principal money should be left in there and 
so much like they do with the interest coming in there every year that they make. And if there's whatever's extra, they can split up between the people like they were originally. That was a good deal. Everybody's happy with that. Well, right, well, the government got in there and decided, well, we need that money instead of spending it on it, which I think we need to state this. have no bank account, don't they? Other than the permanent uh, budget again for the budget. <laughs> Thank you very much for that answer, Thank you. Marcus. Thank I you, and I'd like to t say that Representative Knopp and Representative Levon have joined us. Um, thank you very much, Mr. Bacchus. Um, thank you for calling in. Next, we have Dave Maxwell from Palmer. Yeah, hey, thank you for uh, taking the time to uh, listen to me. And you can hear me okay, I hope. Yes, thank you. Okay, very good. Um, I got a couple of thoughts. Um, I am representing uh, my family. I have four children and my wife. We do live in Palmer. And um, you know what? I, I know for a fact I'm representing a heck of a lot of people. So what I got to say is this. Um, our governor last year tried, and he's seeing the results this year of recall. For what? That's the big question. The, the big the big uh, issue that we have on the table today is much more volatile. Why? Because now we have oil prices that don't look like they're going to sustain our state. We have a stock market that's not going to build our permanent fund. These are the kind of things that are facing us today. Well, they were always facing us. Always. Even last year. We just didn't know it yet. And a responsible person... And I, just, I would like to elaborate. What is a responsible person? A responsible person is one that, like, for example, us, my wife and I, raising four children. You know what? We have them put money away in a savings account. For what? So that they can um, just spend it at will? No, it's to be saved in a responsible manner, and then we're going to tithe some of that money, and then we're going to... Um, have fun with a little bit of that money. So that's a responsible thing that a parent teaches a child. It, it seems to me that what Mike Dunleavy did last year was not threaten any legislator or any agency or any university. It wasn't a threat. What it was was an act of responsibility, trying to get the legislative body and all of these... Um, thank you. Could you please wrap it up? Well, yeah, but the <laughs> the last guy got the last guy got like five minutes. I haven't even had two minutes yet. Okay, what? Well, it's true, actually. Um, our our timer was um, not was a little sleep at the wheel, but thank you. But you can, but please um, uh, continue. But yeah, yeah, I'm trying to wrap it up. What I'm trying to say is that. The adult in the room last year was Mike Dunleavy. And what he was trying to do is he was trying to prep for things like this year. And so, you know, this is, this is, um, this is nothing short. This 306 and 300 is nothing short of trying to make up for the irresponsibility placed on our governor last year. That's what I got to say to our legislative body. And by the way, I'd like to know, why is Mike Shower being shut out? Because now the balance actually, Mr. Maxwell, we're we're talking about um, um, two bills, House Bill three hundred and three hundred six. Um, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you for taking the time to call. Next, we have Richard Wagner from Fairbanks. I'm calling from Fairbanks, Alaska. My name is Richard L. Wagner, and I would like to comment. The state legislators have been, and the governor, not, not this governor, but the previous governor, have been trying to dip into the permanent fund dividend other than what is allotted for the state uh, budget or state coffers trying to get more money and what they're doing is they're trying to take away our dividend to do that and there when this permanent fund dividend was set up back in the 80s because i was here or actually the late 70s early 80s i was here and they had set it up to where the portion that was to be 
delved out to the the uh, residents of the of Alaska. Um, we're supposed to that portion was supposed to be a certain percentage, and it was not supposed to be touched unless they dis, unless the legislature turned around and completely got rid of the whole dividend project, which they would have to have more than two thirds of the they would have to have all the legislators in up at the at the vote, and it would have to pass by two thirds at least for them to delete. Just get rid of the dividend, and the portion for the people was supposed to not be touched at all, and the rest was. And there was a reserve account for emergencies, not for oh, we we need this money to cover regular expenses that we've been needing for a year, two, three, and it wasn't meant for that, and also. When they passed SB 21, that's what messed up our state so bad that um, because it took billions away from the budget. That should and, and could you wrap it up, please? Yes. Anyway, if they would cancel out SB 21 somehow, we would get that money back. And also they need to stop trying to dip into our portion, the, the people's portion of the dividend. Um, okay, I, I don't see any questions. Can we have um, a brief at ease? Uh, brief at ease. Order. Um, I, Mr. Wagner, I don't see any uh, questions. Thank you for taking the time to call. Next, we have uh, Pencia Beaton. Hello. Hello. <clears throat> yeah, do you hear me? I can. Could you give us your name, put it on the record, please? Yes, my name is Pencia Rose Beaton from Anchorage, Alaska. And would you like to bring again your testimony? Yes. Okay, I'm calling in um, for this House Bill 303, uh, 306. I say to the legislators, most of them are, are uh, in because they defrauded we the people, saying that they were something they're not. And I, I suggest to them to stop raping we the people. They represent us. We the people, and um, that permanent fund money is ours, our money. I want some um, discussion about our mineral rights coming back to us. I want my mineral rights back. I want the interest on the permanent fund that was stolen by Walker. And keep hands, keep hands off our money. And the special interest on unions and uh, on uh, nonprofits. That's a special interest that uh, you're trying to get that money for. So keep, keep your hands off our money. Bye. All right, thank you. Um, and I don't see any questions. Um, next, we have Don Stevens from Fairbanks. Okay. I guess Don Stevens just dropped off. We have Alfia Kuzman from Delta Junction. Dear Representative. My name is Afia Kuzman. I'm from Grosser River near Delta Junction. I'm 17 and soon to be a graduate and registered Alaskan voter. I'm here to talk about HD 306 and how I don't support it. I feel that it is inappropriate for you guys as my representative government to take the 50-50 split and turn it to 2080 because we as families use that money to pay the bills, help the poor, buy clothes, and most importantly, buy food. This helps our daily survival and the Alaskan economy. Please, as our representatives, if we change to the formal 
were to be considered, it must put to a vote by the citizens of Alaska. Thank you. Thank you. I don't see any questions. Um, thank you for taking the time to call. Then, Verinia Kuzman, are you online? Hi. Hello. Yes. Hi. My name is Verinia Kuzman. I'm 13 years old and I'm in seventh grade. I live in Delta Junction. I'm calling because I disagree with HD. HB 306. The percentage is too low for us. We started getting seven due to oil sales, and yet we don't even get our share. I feel like lowering, lowering our percentage isn't fair, and I feel like HB 306 should be a vote. My family sees my dividends. So when I turn 18, I can have my share to sh to start my adult life. Thank you and my. Thank you, and I don't see any questions. Thank you for calling in, <clears throat> Michelle LeBlanc from Anch Anchorage. Um, hello. This I this is a statement. There is no question, and my name is Michelle LeBlanc. Uh, I'm a regular voter, registered as an independent in Anchorage in District 23L, um, and I would like to also mention that I'm on the Athabascan. My mother and her clan were born in Chitna. On my grandfather's side, um, that was on my grandmother's side, and on my grandfather's side, I'm a new piat. He was Frank Hobson, known as the Eskimo violin maker, who made violins out of Alaskan birch. I'm speaking to address Alaska, and I apologize right off for uh, uh, the harsh language, but uh, this is really how I feel. I'm speaking to address Alaska's lying, cheating thieves who are lawless lawmakers who have been breaking laws and statutes by having secret meetings and by stealing our permanent fund dividends. I'm also addressing Alaska's unjust judges like Supreme Court Justice William F. Moore, who upheld the lawless lawmakers' decision for thievery. These ones that I'm addressing are elitists who act like robber barons, believing regular people are not intelligent enough to handle their money. People like Alaska Natives, they think they're wasting their money on drugs and alcohol and other foolish things they don't need. That is why the elitist, thieving, lawless lawmakers believe they have a right to steal our uh, permanent fund dividends. Not even considering the cost of fuel for heat, transportation, uh, airfare, and food that people need to live. The leaders are... Could, um, could you wrap it up, please? Yep, almost done. The elitists are lawless lawmakers because Governor Jay Hammond set up the permanent fund dividend for Alaskans with laws and statutes. Therefore, I proclaim that except for a very few of you, you are breaking the law to use our money for your special interests. Thank you very much. Thank you, and I don't see any questions. Thank you for taking the time to call in. Um, Don Stevens in Fairbanks? Hello? Hello. Oh, hello. Could you give us your name and put yourself on the record? Very much. Uh, my name is uh, Don Stevens, and I'm from Stevens Village, and I'm testifying uh, today on behalf of my family and I. And uh, on the permanent fund dividend, uh, I just heard the last lady talk, and uh, she, there's people always talking against uh, Native people and stuff. We're, we're not the majority here in the state. We're, we're the uh, minority. Anyway, that the, uh, I'm calling to say that uh, the, the permanent fund dividend is for, is for
for uh, as for my family and I, we use that for food and for gas. And 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 you all know that how much it how much it costs to travel around uh, villages and uh, the gas price, the airfare, everything is really high. There's a lot of people uh, uh, that don't that don't understand. They don't understand. Uh, they think that uh, uh, we're just uh, we're just uh, uh, buying uh, alcohol and drugs. People, uh, we don't do that. There's a lot of people that don't do that. We need that money for substance. I'm a subsistence user, and and then I go fishing, and I and that little money that I get from the dividend, we use that for gas, gas and food, and, and for airfare, and uh, and so on. So to wind my uh, wind wind my testimony up, I just like to say that uh, 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 that I'm for to not uh, have the legislature uh, touch our permanent fund dividend. There's other means that uh, that the legislature could dig into. There's that uh, gas, uh, and, and we pay a lot of we pay a lot of money for gas on the river and stuff. And and, and, and would you could you please wrap it up? Hey, thank you. Okay. Well, thank you, and uh, but um, again. Uh, uh, thank you for taking my testimony, and uh, I'll sign off. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you for taking the time to call, and I don't see any questions. Next, we have Janina Kuzman. Dear Representatives, my name is Janina Kuzman. I'm 15 years old. I live in the Delta Junction, and here I'm here to talk about AGB 306 and how I'm opposed to, to it. I feel it's not fair to the people to change... 5050 to 2080 because many people use this money to support their families. It's not fair to the people to change 5050 to 2080 because many people use this money to support their families. My family uses this money to buy food, clothes, pay bills, and many other things. So please, as our representatives, let the people decide and vote on this. Thank you for your time. Thank you, and, and I don't see any questions. Thank you for calling in. Next, we have Frank Bauer from Homer. Yeah, yeah hello. Um, my name's Frank Bauer. I live down here in Homer, and I'm representing my, uh, my own thoughts and ideas. Um, I continue to not support increasing the amount the state can spend from the permanent fund or the income tax or the sales tax because... It won't solve the state's budget problem, <clears throat> as it hasn't solved the federal government's or other state government's budget problems <clears throat> um, that already have an income tax and a sales tax. This is because you can't solve problems unless you know what the problem is first. <clears throat> the state of Alaska, like the other governments I mentioned, have a spending problem, but like uh, but like a person with a substance abuse problem, they remain in denial. And Alaska is in denial uh, about what the problem really is here. And therefore, the problem remains unresolved from year to year. <clears throat> Except in the case of a catastrophic, catastrophic event, there's no such thing as a revenue problem. Because we all, government including, receive our income from the same economic source. Whenever government tries to solve their budgetary problems by increasing revenue, no matter how they do it, they only push their problem onto the people. And since we can't raise our incomes like government can, we have to do what government should have done in the first place. And we have to cut our spending, which has a negative impact on business, causes their profits to decline, which reduces government revenue in the next fiscal year. And the problem cycle just starts again. <clears throat> when, government tries, uh, when government tries to increase its revenue this way, it's only taking a larger slice of the economic pie, leaving less for 
consumption and uh, businesses that thrive on that consumption. Um, so the next so uh, can you please uh, wrap it up? I'm just going to end there. I'm just going to end there. I have a lot more that I'd like to say, but I just don't have uh, any more time. So thank you. Okay, and, and I don't see any questions. Thank you for taking the time to call in. Karen Perry from Chugach. Yes, thank you for taking my testimony today. My name is Karen Perry from Chugiak, Alaska, and I see Kathy Tilton on the, this committee, and I want to thank her for standing strong on the PFD issue. I came to Alaska in 1982, and my husband and I have raised five children here. I am vehemently opposed to changing the traditional statutory PFD from a 50-50 split to an 80-20 split, with 80% going to increase the size and scope of government. Any change of the PFD formula should go to a vote of the people. As per our Constitution, which you all took an oath to uphold, in Article 1, Section 2 says the source of government, all political power is inherent in the people. All government originates with the people. It is founded upon their will, not your will, their will only, and is instituted solely for the good of the people as a whole. Notice it says as a whole, not special interest, not for the top 1%, as some of you legislators' income brackets are, who prefer to grow government on the back of those less fortunate and even, <clears throat> excuse me, to the low point of literally stealing. You're stealing from children. Children. As per the ICER report, reducing the PFD has the worst overall impact on the overall Alaskan economy. You already know this. You propose to take millions of the local economies. This is destroying small businesses. It is making it difficult for the people to buy the needed fuel, food, utilities, etc. Worst of all, it is breaking the law as the last several years have proven. You've literally ignored written law. The statute is law. How dare you think you are above the rule of law? In closing, all due respect is a wonderful expression because it doesn't actually specify how much respect is due. Could be none, none, as it applies to many of you, which are law-breaking thieves. That concludes my testimony. Thank you. Thank you, and I don't see any questions. Thank you for taking the time to call in. Um, <clears throat> next, we have Severian Kuzman. My name is Jim Kuzman. I am 16 years old. I am from South Junction, Alaska. I want to ask, what are you guys doing? Doing this 20 to 80 to 20 percent instead of 50 50. This is our money to help others and ourselves. If you guys don't agree, then why don't you do a drug test and put HB 3062 AOH? I am a fisherman disagree since this oil spill affects our fishing business. Thank you. Thank you very much. I don't see any questions. We'll be taking Melissa Godalba next and we'll have to be we'll be taking a um, a break until six for emergency meetings. So Melissa, could you please um, hi, my name is Melissa, and I'm just calling from Wasilla, Alaska. I'm not calling on behalf of a business or an organization or an affiliation. I'm just calling on behalf of my family and fellow citizens about our PFD and about it not being a fair share. I mean, you're breaking the law, breaking the Constitution. We have a lot of things coming up financially that are going to hit our economy hard. We need our money now more than ever. We don't need you to dip in our pockets and say that you can budget better for us or figure out how to spend our money better for us. Honestly, if your services are what do we have left for our future of our kids, that's not really leaving them much. Nothing but socialism and to stay on welfare and to be kept down, which I think they should be brought up. I don't think that they should be going through any of these hardships which are going to be falling directly upon them because 
of these decisions you're making today. Budget cuts need to be made. When my budget's tight for my family and for my kids, you know what I do? I think it over, I cut spending. We don't need extra things, we don't do extra things. I think our government needs to do the same thing. Instead of tapping the other people, like the little people for their PFD, the people that need it the most right now. And, and could you, for the record, could you uh, say your whole name for us, please? It's Melissa Godoba. Thank you. U-D-O-B-B-A. And I don't see any questions. Thank you for taking the time to call in. We will recess this hearing until 6. Trish uh, Gordoff from Wasella Online. Or Jonathan Gordoff. Oh, Jonathan, sorry. Jonathan Gordoff? Jonathan Gordoff, correct. Um, would you like to put your name on the record and begin your testimony? Yes, Jonathan Gordoff, Wasilla, Alaska. Registered voter. Um, I wanted to say uh, a couple things. Um, I have a lot of questions for you, but we don't have any time for those. So I'm just going to make statements. Uh, you're crooks. You're stealing from me. You're stealing from my family. You're stealing from my children's children. And you're trying very hard. You're not only, like, you have to try at this, and you're trying very hard. And I dare you to put it to a vote. Put it to a vote, and let's end this. Let's end this, okay? Because that is Alaskans' money, not yours. And your overspending is ridiculous. And uh, that would put you in the category of trash legislators. You can't do your job. Can't do your job, okay? If you're at a company, private company, you would be fired. Okay? No good reference at all. All right? I can't wait for election season to come around. That's all I want to say. You're trash. Epstein didn't kill himself. Infowars.com. Thank you. Um, I don't see any questions. Thank you for taking the time to call. Next, we have Trish Wagner. Um, Nikolaj? Nikolajic. Could you please uh, put your name on the record and begin your testimony, please, from Fairbanks? Yes, this is Trish Wagner Mikulogic. I am a third, fourth generation Alaskan, born and raised in Fairbanks, Alaska. My grandfather is William G. Stroker um, of First National Bank here, lived here all my life, uh, families grown up here. I am just calling with regards to these bills that you are presenting to fund from the permanent fund my big question to you is that number one what what are they funding number two the dollar amount from what i'm hearing is that you guys are taking 80 percent of our permanent fund to fund these two bills is that correct actually this this for the clarification this is the structured draw that from the permanent fund itself, and um, um, this is part of the state revenue and part of the dividend. Right, and which many have already explained to you guys that I don't know who we keep putting in office that keeps destroying our money for our natural resources, but if you look back on the history um, Sarah Palin's ACES, which is Alaska Clear Equitable Share, I read through it all, and unfortunately none of our legislators want to do that. Instead, they want to be bought and paid by big oil, which is only, remember, a producer. Yes, you do the job, we pay it. We have no contracts. We gave away two-plus billion a year under Senate Bill 21. And, um, no, we don't want to give any more of our permanent fund dividend away for unethical things, for not 
by the people for the people of Alaska. That's not what the permanent fund dividend was established for. It's for our money, for our profits, from our natural resources. And if we fix Senate Bill 21, this all this would go away. They're having a feeding frenzy, and at this point, enough is enough. We've had it as Alaskans, and these other bills that you want to dip into our permanent fund, it shouldn't be allowed to do. This was never a way to to pay for things out of our permanent fund when it doesn't relate to the people of Alaska or get voted in by the people of Alaska. So as far as I'm concerned, it's a no on all of this. And we need to relook at everything because fraudulent stuff was done under Parnell with the SB 21, and it should have been repealed back then. Um, they wasted more of our money and given away more of our money for them just to pull out and say, thank you, Alaska, we'll see you later, um, by getting people in to the legislators that basically are being paid off by the oil companies to pay them this money. And now you guys are trying to dip into our permanent fund again. No, that money is for the people. It was set up for the people and it needs to go to the Alaskans for the next generation. Thank you. I don't see any questions. Thank you for taking the time to call in. We will recess until 6.30. Holy crap! Did you guys just see that? This thing's supposed to be going on until 7 o'clock. First, it gets preempted programming by Governor Dunleavy and uh, Dr. Zwink notifying Alaska that we've had our first case come in. The person that has tested positive for the coronavirus has been released, and he is or she is now in a confined area for the next few weeks in an undesignated place for safety purposes so that people will let them live their lives. And this wasn't even their destination. They just happened to be on a plane that it was going to. Now our legislators have decided that uh, having this PFD House Bill 300-306, this is supposed to be the second half of this going on, was preempted, like I said. And so they started at 530 the 5 o'clock airing of what they had already been doing during this press conference. It shows you how much concern the Alaska House majority actually had for Alaskans when the announcement of the first virus was coming out. They were more concerned about hearing from Alaskans about how to steal those money from us than they were about having our first coronavirus case showing up. So, make a long story short, they now give us the first 30 minutes that we missed while Governor was doing his thing, and then all of a sudden they hear an announcement that they got an emergency they got to run off to, and they disappear, and they're gone for 30 minutes, and then miraculously the television blinks, and Gavel to Gavel has fast-forwarded the 30 minutes that was missing from the airing of that, and then they go right back into taking testimonies again. And they get maybe three or four more testimonies in and then say, we're done for now. We're closing this up. Uh, we've got other things to do. We'll be back here in a little while to come and discuss what is going on. Right about 6.30, we, we've got some other issue that we now got to go and take care of. So let's see. This is just one of those days that we're supposed to be one of the biggest pivotal moments in our lives as Alaskans. Them permanently trying to steal our PFD, and just like they did last year when it House Bill 2001, they in House Bill 2002. Man, I'm just getting really uh, uh frustrated here. This is the same stunts that they pulled last year. Short testimony times, supposed to be for two or three hours. They only give you about 30 minutes. They find every excuse in the world why not to start them on time. Or when they do start them on time, they find excuses like today, emergency number one, 30 minutes cut out. Emergency number two, we're now supposed to sit and wait and see if they come back. Bear with me, I'm still frustrated. I'm going to go back to MTA in just a moment uh, and, and restart them back up. Are they going to give us all the time that they've taken away from us? This is over 30 minutes worth of testimonies they were missing. I call this meeting back to order. 
times 629. I see that Barbara Mellon from Wasella is on the line. Would you like to introduce yourself and um, start your testimony? Uh, yes, my name is Barbara Milland, and I'm a um, 45-year Alaskan. I have my children, my grandchildren, and now my great-grandchildren here. And um, last night I filled out my online uh, PFD application and noticed that there's nearly 500,000 people that have applied. That's nearly half a million people in Alaska that are counting on this uh, dividend uh, this year. And I didn't, I was wondering if the finance committee was the, even considering the vast number of people that, um, Everybody I know is very angry about what uh, the legislature is trying to do with the, the 2080 split. They're not happy with anything since Walker did his thing either. And um, I just would like to put in my two cents that um, I know you're not going to listen, that you don't care what we think. We're just peons and sirs, but uh, we're not happy about this. I've said my piece. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. I don't see any questions, but thank you for taking the time to call in. Um, next, we have Ron Berner from Meadow Lakes. Good evening. My name is Ron Bernier. I'm from Meadow Lakes, Alaska. I've been truly blessed by this great state. My wife and I are raising nine children. Eight of them are homeschooled, and our youngest will start next season. We rely on our PFDs for savings for college, to start businesses for our children, to buy property and build their own homes. In the last five years, if we had received our dividend the way it was supposed to be, there would have been $62,194 that was taken from our family from the legislatures from walking on down. Many, all, all Alaskans really rely on this PFD. Please, we oppose HB 300 and 306. Yep, very good. And I'm, I'm asking you guys, you need to get this on a ballot to the people and get this thing straightened out. But do not pass HB 300 or 306. Thank you. Thank you. I don't see any questions, and thank you for taking the time to call. Um, <clears throat> next, we have Sarah Ann Jackson from Juneau. Hello, my name is Sarah Ann Jackson. I'm calling from Juneau, Alaska. I am absolutely appalled that you people continue to bring up the testimony, the testimony, the testimony, call in and testify. We called in. We've testified. We've told you, stop this insanity. Stop stealing from the people. This is not your money. If you can't budget, then you go home and you get a job like the rest of us have to do. And you're sitting there drinking your coffee and laughing. You got problems. You guys have got problems. And guess what? We are not going to continue to sit back and take this from you over and over and over again. This is nothing but a clown show hoping you will wear us down. It's not going to work. We're done playing in your little clown show. We are ashamed, ashamed that you are sitting there saying, call in and testify again and again. And again, there's something wrong with you people. You need to stop it. Stop it and give us our permanent fund. It's not your money. Have you no shame? You say, the kids, the kids, the kids. And yet you take from every child in Alaska. How dare you? I'm done. I am so done with this crazy thing you're calling a government. It's nothing but a clown show. Shame on you. Thank you. Um, I don't see any questions, but thank you for taking the time to call in. Next we have David Nees from Anchorage. Hello, my name is David Nees. I'm 
This is David Neat speaking for myself. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank the committee for putting these two bills out there for public testimony. Uh, difficult choices have to be made. Uh, from the majority of the testifiers, it sounds like uh, they're not really in favor of this particular solution. And uh, I hope you will consider them. Um, the main thing that I have is that, you know, if you pass the, either of these laws, you will have the option of ignoring them like you have uh, ignored the two laws that are currently on the book with the point of uh, percent of market value and the other one. So it's like I said, it's, it's an interesting um, proposal. I think it has merits. It should be debated. But listening to the people that are calling in, their debate is basically that it shouldn't go any further than this finance committee. Um, we will be listening and uh, recording the votes. And uh, Madam Chair, just for the purpose of decorum, when you have your members sitting there on their phones when people are testifying, it shows an extreme disrespect to the testifiers. So kitchen table rule at my house is if you have a phone, it's face down in front of you on mute, so you cannot pick it up and interact. Because when you're interacting with your phone, you're ignoring the people. That's my testimony. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, Representative Merrick has a question. Thank you, Madam Chair. Hi, Mr. Neese. I know you're very involved in the political scene. I'm just curious, what would your ideal scenario be for the permanent fund? Well, my ideal scenario is that we probably should go back to Hammond's model, which is a 50-50 split. And you really need to go back. If you're going to put these two proposals out of committee, it needs to go out for a vote for the people. We've spoken once before on it. It was overwhelming um, that, you know, the people actually believe that putting it into the private sector is the better use of the fund. We're suffering out here in the private sector, as we've had to do without for a while. A little bit of time now for the government to do a little bit without and concentrate on what your core mission is if, if you cannot deliver it for what we have you are in great deal of trouble if the price of oil continues to do a little bit of a free fall so i i prefer the 50 50 uh, read a lot on hammond's uh turning the oil wells into money pumps uh, you've got a problem with uh, your money pump sitting in the uh, fall street right now because the stock market is dropping, and when the stock market drops, the uh, corpus does not earn as much, which gives you less to spend. So just defining what your core mission is as far as services. We have a lot of services that were not here 50 years ago that are now being given by the government. A follow-up? Thank you for that answer. So do you think that we can get to a 50-50 by just cuts in the budget, or do you think we'll need to raise revenue through taxes or another source? I think it's probably going to be a combination of both. I mean, you just your, your biggest problem is you do not have enough people in the state generating enough income to pay the bills that you're producing uh, in the state. I mean, you'd have to tax people at uh, seventeen thousand dollars per person, man, woman, and child, to keep up with the spending. So even if you were able to cut uh, your spending, you still you still got a big big load to carry. But I think refocusing on again what the core mission is of what the state is supposed to deliver in services is just where you've got to start. And we, we still haven't been able to, to resolve that issue. Thank you. I appreciate your answers, Mr. Neese. Thank you. See no further questions. We'll go on to Greg Weaver from Wasilla. Mr. Weaver, are you there? Yes, I'm here. I uh, just want to say, as a lifelong Alaskan, can you, excuse me. Can, can you start with giving your name for the record, please? Greg Weaver, no affiliation. Greg Weaver, no affiliation. Lifelong resident, active duty, disabled Marine Corps. And now completely disabled to an unfortunate workers' comp case that's taken six and a half years to get to the Supreme Court. I appreciate Mr. Dunleavy, who I voted for. I'm not a Republican and certainly not a Democrat. I'm a very conservative person being raised in this state. And it's very frustrating watching everyone in Juneau uh, argue over matters that really 
really are not concerning anyone. I uh, I've seen Elvis Jackson declare a day for for gays and blacks and Puerto Ricans, and uh, it's it's great when all the roads are constructed and plowed and paved and pretty as possible. All the uh, kinds of people that come out of the woodwork, but uh, I I have a I have a serious objection. Uh, to this bill passing, and I only want the best for this state. I wish that most of these uh, committees, such as House Finance, were headed by people that are actually on the road system. I'd like to see the capital move to the road system. It's frustrating to contact your offices and your staff and uh, get an argument from people that are from Juno. And uh, there's no other state, just to remind you, that uh, lives this way um, with a capital that's completely off the map and no one can get to or afford to fly to. And uh, I just uh, would like to see you standing up for no more working people on the road system and quit making allowances for everyone else that wants to live out on the fringes of society. Thank you. Have a Thank you. Um, I don't see any questions. Thank you for taking the time to call in. Next, we have Neil Osman from Deltana. Mr. Osman? Hi, um, my name is Neil Fitzkuzman, and I live in Deltana, Alaska. I am 15 years old, and this is my first year of high school. I am interviewing now with the Republic. Representatives are doing with the HB 306 percentage because my parents can pay the bills on how long it was, on how low it was last year. And our family is a fishing business industry, and we did bad last year on how, and now we can't afford a deck. And so my dad takes me out fishing, and then I miss a lot of school, sometimes a week or two out of the month. Just because we have a low percentage dividend and our fishing is bad. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for taking the time to call. Kurt Schmidt from Delta Junction. Kurt Schmidt. Hello. Hi, my name is Kurt Schmidt. I'm calling from Delta Junction. I oppose HB 306. Um, a representative government is supposed to take care of the people of the state. Uh, my representative government has been silenced. My representative has had his staff taken away. I have a hard time communicating with him. He's one man. He used to have six. Uh, HB 306, and the 306, it, it takes away resources that many Alaskans have understood to be a part of. It's a huge, uh, the, the dividend turns out to be a huge contributor to the state economy. And for the legislature to continue spending irresponsibly, in my opinion, and the opinion of many people, and uh, to withhold all of those resources from the state economy, it's, it's crippling to rural villages, it's crippling to small businesses on the road system, and it's crippling to many families. And uh, I, I think spending needs to be trimmed back. As a representative government, to change something as monumental as the way the uh, dividend is configured, the 50-50 split, and go to 80-20, if anything like that were to be entertained, in my opinion, it should go to a vote of the people. Because to change that, the way you intend to change it, it's not representative government anymore. <laughs> and what problematic. We've got our our kings are now behind the moat in Juno. They're across the ocean. You guys are getting into bad territory here. Silencing our representatives. Uh, Mr. Eastman represents 100,000 people. Mr. Showers, what's going on? You have a zero vote of confidence for me. I, I can't trust you guys to make good decisions anymore. 
it's frightening. And it's frightening to a lot of people. And oh, thank you, Mr. Smith. Would you like to wrap it up? Yeah. So, uh, representative government, if they're going to make a change to the 50-50 split, it needs to go to a vote of the people. Otherwise, don't touch it. Thank you. Uh, Representative Wall has a question for you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Mr. Schmidt, you mentioned you can't reach your... Who, who's your representative in... Uh, Mike Shower. And, and uh, you live in Delta? Yeah. And so when I contact Mike Shower, I used to have... Somebody would answer the phone. Somebody would reply to an email. And so now I, I don't get instantaneous response like I used to. It's uh, days away. Okay. You, you also have a... Mike, is, Mike has explained it to me as he doesn't have the staff support that he used to have. Yeah, I, I believe you also have a, a state representative, not just a senator as well, so... Um, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time. And I think your state representative is Representative Rauscher. Tellerico. Oh, Tellerico. Uh, no, Rauscher. Uh, Rauscher. Representative Rauscher. Thank you for taking the time to call. Next, we have Sherry Eichenlaub. Sherry, are the are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay. Could you put your name on the record, please, and begin your testimony? Yes, my name is Sherry Eichenlaub. I am from Eagle River, Alaska. I am calling on behalf of myself, my children, and my grandchildren. I'll just make this simple. I'm against both HB 300 and HB. B306. I'm very unhappy of how what I'm seeing going on in Juneau, and I'll just let it at that. Everybody else has said pretty much what I've been wanting to say. Thank you very much. I don't see any questions, but thank you for taking the time to call. Next, we'll go up to the Fairbanks LIO, where we have Sterling Gallagher. I'm actually in Anchorage. I mean Anchorage. Sorry. Uh, I'm Sterling Gallagher. I was the Commissioner of Revenue for Hammond. I'm the guy that drafted the permanent fund, carried it in the legislature, developed the permanent fund corporation, got it passed. And so I know quite a bit about the subject. This this idea uh, that we, we don't have enough money is just poppycock. Um, back, our level of spending, believe it or not, is less than when, when we had oil. So uh it's and it's all because we don't have any income tax and things like that uh we used to have an income tax we had a we had a severance tax uh that would be yielding about 1.3 billion dollars a year uh we have uh pots of money around that total almost three to four billion dollars that the permanent fund could be sustained and just give you an example is you have sitting in the power cost equalization fund $1.495 billion. You can have the, the permanent fund write a annuity contract with them to deliver the $29 million a year and have eight, almost $900 million left over. That would go a long way toward solving this revenue problem. You have AHFC that earns 2.2%. You have ADA that use earns 0.3%. The state was designed as a financial institution. Make it work. Make AHFC start to earn something like 8 or eight to 10%. It can do that. ADA can do that. Let's have some legislative follow-up and make sure this is working like a financial institution. It was designed like a financial institution. It was originally drafted like a, a fixed income, and that's my, my expertise. A few years later, they wanted to have it in, in more into stocks. They've done well in the stock market, but right now the stock market's going all haywire. We can institute more fixed income and make sure that the money is there for the dividends. So I am I am very frustrated with this legislature not understanding the tools that you have at at place and give the full dividend. That's my testimony. Um, thank you. I don't see any questions. Thank you for taking the time to go to the LIO and testifying. Next we have 
Alexandra, oh, yeah, Alexandra Cusman. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I, I think we've heard from many in your family talking about fishing, and, and your address on our uh, device says your Delta Junction. Where, where do you? Where does your family fish? Homer. We just live in Delta. Thank you. I don't see any other questions. So thank you for taking the time to testify. We will do a slight recess until 7 p.m. Another recess until 7 p.m. I mean, this is getting ridiculous. It's, they trying to tell us that they don't have enough people calling in right now? How about you guys? I've got 17 people right now, 18 people watching. Everybody here has already called in. They've all left messages, said, hey, I want to talk to them, and ready to give them your two cents? I mean, there should be no reason why they should be having recesses like this, keep delaying the, the conversation. Oh, he's back on his cell phone again. Uh, he, he never seems to put that one down. Did you hear the person that told him, you know, you guys should be paying attention to us. I see you writing in your little things. I see you passing notes. I see you looking at your cell phone. And there he is, sitting right on the corner. And he flips the cell phone flat onto its face so nobody else got to see it. Interesting times. I would say right now, testimony-wise, from this morning and currently to this point right now, we're well over 90% for them leaving the PFD alone, sticking with the statute, following the law. They have more than enough money sitting in the permanent fund dividend in the ERA, even with, with the stock market tanking this year, they could pay back all $7,700 that they owe each individual who is due a PFD. Currently right now, if you have had your PFD stolen since day one, and this year's PFD that will be coming, which will be another $3,000, that will be a total of $7,700 that we should be receiving each and every one of us for our permanent fund dividend this year. And guess what? Even with the stock market tanking like it has, they have made more money than what they would have to spend to pay us our permanent fund dividend. They don't want you to know that. In fact, before the stock market tanked, they had about $3 billion extra above and beyond paying the state budget, paying us our full PFD. Then the stock market tanked thanks to the coronavirus and the way it, that seems to work whenever there's unrest in the world. The stock market seems to like things nice and calm and not going crazy for some reason, but hey, it is what it is. So anyways, even with the stock market tanking, our, our permanent fund dividend is still pulled in about 4.5, almost $5 billion this year. Before it tanked, it had pulled in closer to $8 billion. So we've lost around 2.5, almost $3 billion in our permanent fund this year, uh, th thanks to the virus that we're experiencing right now. Even with all of that and the shortfall that they have for paying the budget this year and the past due that they've stolen from us, $7,700 per person, you can take all of that, combine it together, and they still have an extra $500 million to almost $1.5 billion more in extra earnings that they actually brought in in realized earnings this year. This is not 
unrealized. In other words, this isn't cash on hand. This is cash on hand. What they have projected for making, they want to tell you that this is not considered, even though that number is there, this is not what we really have sitting on hand, in our hand right now. We would have to sell the, the asset that we got that's given us that inflated money or that stock that gave us that inflated money to, to actually have that cash on hand. It's just a big old shell game cards. The formula that's been there that works is based off of a five-year average for our statutory PFD. There is nothing flawed about it. There is no reason why we should never see a full PFD for my generation, my kids' generation, my kids' kids' generation. They should all be seeing a permanent fund dividend, one that continues to keep growing like we've been seeing our record $3,000 PFDs two years in a row. We should be capitalizing on this. Instead, our government is stealing it from us, and they're handing it off to a minority population of the state of Alaska. And guess what, folks? That minority population that's seeing our money is making six-plus figures a year from us. Yes. All right, we've got 60,000 Alaska AFL-CIO group. Unions in the state of Alaska. I know I'm going to piss a lot of people off, but you guys, you're, you're paying union dues to people that are stealing your permanent fund, your right to the oil wealth to the land that we own. We got to start standing up for our rights. We got to start taking advantage of what we have and what we can do, like calling into our legislators today and saying, hey, dang it, these two bills you're trying to pass. They're a hunk of junk. You guys are nothing but a bunch of crooked thieves sitting down there in Juno, sitting in your ivory tower, hidden away, where only the special interests and the lobbyists have the ability to show up and come and take our money and do whatever you want them to do for you. And, you know, we know who these guys are. They call themselves Recall Dunleavy. They call themselves Save Our State. Those two groups right there are the special interests of Alaska. 60,000 union members are involved with them. We've got another 20,000 K through 12 teachers that are fully on board with stealing the children's permanent funds that they're trying to teach. Who's causing the most economic regressive tax to the state of Alaska. They tax and they are stealing from children. They steal from women in Alaska. And just this last past few years, we've had a well over 9,000 people leave the state of Alaska. We've had more people leave than we've had come back in. We, that is a deficit of 9,000 less people living in the state of Alaska. Guess what? Department of Health and Social Services came out with a report from last year to this year, how many people are collecting welfare in our state. Last year, I was putting out a number of somewhere between 216 and 219,000 people was on welfare in the state of Alaska. DHSS came out with their new report. It now has 225,000 people living on one form of welfare or another in our state. We have lost 9,000 people out of the state, wage earners out of the state, and have grown by almost an equal amount of people that have been shoved into poverty and living on welfare in our state. This is why they want to steal all of our permanent fund dividend, is because these people that are being shoved into welfare is because they can't pay their bills. We're back. I'm going to hit mute, and away we go. If only you guys could see the little jig I do when this music is on. I tell you, you got to do something to keep yourself entertained.
this meeting. Call this meeting back to order. Uh, we have Jenna Stevens on the phone from Stevens Village. Would you please give us your name for the record and start your testimony? Stevens? Yeah. Yes. My name is Jenna Stevens, and I'm testifying against the legislator using the public permit fund dividend. Our people um, have been using these dividends, you know, their entire life. We live a subsistence lifestyle here in the village in rural Alaska, and we rely on that PSD to do our subsistence activities and mainly to survive here in Alaska. With the economy being so harsh right now, we have to start looking out for our future generations and what are we going to instill in them as far as holding on to our cultural values as Alaska Native Indigenous people. Um, I also wanted to mention that we do use these funds back into the economy and the Alaska economy and it doesn't go out. So we rely heavily on it and wouldn't want that to change, especially for our younger people that are trying to live in rural Alaska now. A lot of our villages are diminishing, they're getting smaller and people are having to move to go to school and they're having to relocate their families you know, to Fairbanks to go to school, but yet they lose all of their cultural value by not living the subsistence lifestyle anymore. So we have to keep our rural villages alive. We have to bring infrastructure back to them, and we have to let them start to strive again. And I know this can happen if the state allows this to happen. Thank you. And, uh, would you, did you, would you have, do you have a wrap up or? Oh, no, I just wanted to say thank you for listening to my testimony. Okay, thank you. I, I don't see any uh, other questions. Thank you for taking the time to call. Uh, we have Linda Trembach from North Pole. Hello. Hello. Could you Hi. put your name on the record? Hi. I'm in North Pole, Alaska. Yes, and, and would you like to continue to give your... Oh, yes, I'm sorry. I was waiting for an okay. Um, so, yes, I was born in Alaska 55 years ago, and um, my mother's from Nenana. My grandparents are from Nenana. It's a long generation of Alaskans. And I am calling in regards to the HB 306, the bill to change the traditional story PSD formula from the 50-50 split to the 80-20 split with the 80% going to the state government. I think the first thing uh, would be the best for Alaskans is this should be brought to the voters for approval. Um, and I am a single mom. I have a handicapped child who is actually an adult who lives with me. I have two other ch children. And life in Alaska is very, very expensive. And um, most of my, well, all my dividends usually go for fuel for the winter and so forth. And with that being cut and limiting would limit where I would have to live to be able to, you know, help you know, keep my children alive and my son here, you know, in the state of Alaska. It's a, it's a very difficult time. He's 24-hour care. And um, I do count on that. I'm not on any other assistance or anything. It's just that that is really planned for winter survival, like many people that do lose their, you know, their jobs in the winter um, also do that, too. So I just want to say I'm against it. I hope that you will uh, please listen to us in regards to that um, it should be uh, on a vote and not just hand it over to the government because it's uh, there's so much wasteful spending and a lot of things could be tied up to make things a lot better. And I, I'm done. If anyone has any questions. Thank you. Representative Carpenter has a question. 
Thank you, Madam Chair. And thank you for calling in this evening. I just have a, a question concerning your your family situation. And uh, um, you had uh, said that you have a handicapped child. I was just curious if you are happy with the state services that you receive in regards to the, the challenging uh, lifestyle that you have there with that. I have to say yes. And that is the reason I have stayed in Alaska. Um, so my son has so many opportunities being special needs. He was born with Down syndrome. He's actually 28. Um, he has a uh, severe seizure disorder that uh, he's 24 hour care. He's on a G tube. He's still in diapers. He doesn't talk. It's a, it's, it's a tough life for him. Um, and by the way, uh, he actually was going to, uh, things were going bad for him. He was going into cluster seizures and so forth. And it was the beginning of the end of summer. And I did get the approval from the state to put him on CBD oil, and he goes days without seizures now. Thank you. <laughs> You're a true saint. Thank you for calling in tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Night. And thank you for calling. I. Is there anybody in the room that wishes to testify? I do not see anybody online. So. Public testimony is closed. So, Just another wonderful day in Juneau, Alaska. Let me tell you, don't forget to share, folks. I think I've done enough commentaries on this video today. Y'all have a great evening. Don't forget to share. Facebook squeals on you if you don't share. Don't go, go ahead and go <laughs> to our YouTube page, Politidic. We are rocking and rolling on there. We are uploading new videos every single day. We're hopefully here soon. We'll be live streaming to both YouTube and Facebook at the same time. Again, don't forget to share. Thanks.